Welcome back to the vlog. New fish vlog time, number four. And my mate's back, look. He's back from his international travels. And he's been up to so much that we just had to get out and get a catch up before I'm going on holiday as well. So let's get around, we're at Barston. The fishing's amazing, we've already started. Uh, he's been chucking it down all morning, but Mick's got loads to tell us about. Individual feeder national champion, division one national champion. I think they won the World Club Champs float fish off this weekend as well, the Barnsley Blacks. Just an epic week. He's got the World Champs to tell us about, the World Club Champs to tell us about in Poland, so so much to catch up on. So this is going to be a long one, but we're going to have a great chat. We're going to catch some nice fish along the way because I'm going to do a bit of fishing while we're chatting with Mick. Should be a really good one. So without further ado, let's get vlogging. Joe, how are you doing? I'm just going to turn my phone off so we can have a bit of peace and quiet because that's what we need today. A bit of peace and quiet? Yeah, we'll uh, shut, shut off the outside world. Right. And uh, I'm going to sit here nice and comfy <laughs> with a cup of tea. Everyone because... will be thinking, why aren't you fishing? But it's been a bit hectic for you, hasn't it? So I'm giving you a free pass today. I'll tell you what, uh, thanks very much. You've dragged me out of bed Monday morning <laughs> when I needed sleep like never before. 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Um, yeah, fishing's not really something I'm desperate to do today. <clears throat> it's funny that given the fact that for the past six weeks you've been doing nothing but fishing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure once upon a time I actually said it'd be great to go fishing all the time. And, and it is. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. There's, not, there's nothing more I like doing. Um, but we're still human and there's bodies and there's tiredness and, you know, and travelling and physical, you know, effort. Because um, you still have to push your own barrel up and down, don't you? And yeah. lug your own gear Tie your own hooks. Oh, well, I tell you what, why don't you just go out and just get one straight away? I've set that up for you now, so we're fishing up. on that, and you've just stepped on it. <laughs> you've done what you do, haven't you? I'll just jump on it and catch one. So, last time I did a vlog was with our man Sam. Yes. Because you were out in Poland on that week. But, right, is that, yeah. But, yeah. I'm going to get a map out then and yes, have a look. But that there. was the second part of the massive adventure <clears> you've just been on. Yeah. So where did it all start? Where, what you been well, I think the last time me and you were together, we... Uh, you were just getting ready for the World Champs, weren't you? Yeah. In fact, I were doing the uh, Atacane. You were doing Atacane. <coughs> which I'm not going to go into detail, but basically it's a passport for your fishing tackle getting for customs and excise to get it in and out of a non-EU EU country, which is Serbia. Um, Atacane, that So me and you, yeah, I were on, I were on my laptop while we to were London, doing... To London, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, London the transport calling. office or whatever. I think we were at the Glebe and we, we were, were just yeah. doing the uh, sort of info videos on the new fish kit markers. Yep. The kit markers, because we were launching them just as I set off. Um, and that's another Thanks story. Thanks to everyone but, who's bought one of them, by the way. Well, yeah, if you could just slow down a bit, let's, <laughs> let's keep up. Um, we can't package them fast enough. <clears throat> so we were off to Serbia with the Drennan... England feeder team. For the World Champs? Yeah. Um, First, hang up. 12th, the 12th World Feeder Championships. There he is, another is. cart, well done, Joe. And um, obviously it's well done. It, it, there's some amazing fish. And today is perfect, because it's overcast. There's a little ripple on. And they're confident, they're feeding. They are feeding well, aren't they? Well, they must do, because you've just gone out and got one straight away. <clears throat> Even I got one. I had a little go on Several. It, but, yeah, it's, it's hard work, all that tapping and slapping, and not like sitting behind a feeder rod, is it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, we went, uh, it's well documented now, so everybody knows really what went off, but I'll just, you know, talk you through my personal uh, experience. Yeah. And I think it's probably just quickly worth saying to the people watching about Drennan have done an amazing video about the whole thing. Yep, if, so you if they want to go to the Drennan International YouTube page, there's. Um, they did an epic, haven't they? I'm going to say it's a movie. It's, it is a, movie. Um, it's a film, isn't it? It's not. It's not a video. The video is what we do. We just pop a little video on. But this is a movie. It's a story. It's the whole journey. Well worth checking out. Yeah, if yeah. They capture everything, don't they? So yeah. check that out on the Drennan International YouTube page. Make a change from watching you, Joe, won't it? <laughs> um, but what what happened was we off we went. Big journey. Drove down to Serbia. And we set about the DTD canal. I think DTD is actually what every canal's there in Serbia is called. 
Uh, but it's a, it's a canal that runs into the Danube. Everybody said it's an offshoot. No, it's not. It's a canal that basically services the cities and the industry. Mm -hmm. Proper old shipping canal. And it exits into the... Um, the planes right underneath Birmingham Airport. Yeah, yeah we right? didn't go on a plane. We went on, we went in van. Um, that were Paul and we went on a plane. <clears throat> I'll just let that plane pass. Planes, trains and automobiles, that could be the story. Yeah. And carp. What and carp? Of, of vast sizes. Joe's into another one. Do you know what, mate? I've never actually come and done a bit of slapping here. And the fishing's just been phenomenal, hasn't it? It's incredible. Jeez, this one's like... And that, that one's pulling. Whoa. That one's pulling like... Is it tied to that plane? I think I found it. Oh, now you've it. got a bend in your pole, haven't you? <laughs> Think about. Well, well, while you're wrestling with that, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's a it, it's a big canal, up to 140 meters in places, and the match length was below the last, if you like, weir or barrier or um, sort of level um, gates, and then it were open ended up into the into the Danube. Danube's obviously one of Europe's biggest rivers. Um, we fished in there with Ren and Barnsley uh, in the past. What and on Danube or that? The, the Danube. Actually, on the other bank, because, well, I remember when we were there, a place called Gollyback, uh, and that's where we all fished Gollyback. for Gorbis. Yeah, I remember it. Um, World Club Championships. I think there were one silverfish caught all week there, but that were, that's another story, which I'm sure has been told before, but there it is, Joe, a nice fish. Common. And um, so this canal is wild, natural, open to the elements. So it catches the wind. It's had a bit of tow on it, depending on the river, because the Danube is obviously one of Europe's biggest rivers. And so the draw from that canal, so depending on how they um, nice control the, the, the levels, because it obviously feeds the agricultural land around it, a bit like the middle level situation, mm -hmm. Um, depending on how much tow you got on the thing, and, and one of the days it actually did tow really well, and it dropped probably 40 centimetres. So we set about that, and big job, World Championships. You spend a lot of time preparing. Seems to come around really quick, and that's just me looking from the outside in. Yeah, they, they do because, of course, you. The last one was in October, wasn't it? Yeah, you're leaping from one event to another. It was late last year in Belgium. It was October, so J July came around really quickly, and it was the beginning of July. So off we went and. We didn't, we didn't really have much information about this place, um, and we'd fished a canal in Novisad, a very similar situation actually, a very similar sort of canal, but a bit narrower, uh, more in town, not quite as um, out in the sticks. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and that's well documented, but this one isn't. But we knew there'd be some catfish, but they didn't think there'd be lots of them. By catfish, you mean the little Poisson chats? The Poisson chats, which are the little tench with, with spines and, and whiskers, yeah. For all intents and purposes, they're, they're like a little tench about that big. And they go from tiny, tiny ones, which we finished up calling the little the little black ones, um, up to the yellow ones, because they sort of changed. Matured, the, they? Yeah, they were a bit bigger. They were the three ounce Tiger fish. species. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the average was 30 to 40 grams. Um, different stamps and, you know, without getting too lost in the details of the fishing, we did think that there was a way to determine which side you caught, but I wouldn't say that we mastered it. Mm -hmm. uh, we happened across it more often than we did by... By we design did it, sort of thing. By design, yeah. Um, so, there's always five days practice, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we spend that day in a structured manner, uh, Dean Barlow, this manager, Obviously, the team consists of uh, myself, um, Will Freeman, my travelling partner, Lee Kerry, Rob Watton, who travel together, and then Steve Ringer and Adam Wakelin. Massive uh, support team behind us. Um, Graham West, Rich Wilson, Jamie Harrison, Eddie Bryden, and they're grafting. You know, they do Proper. a lot of work. And then we were joined by Steve Winters uh, and Rich. Sorry, I forgot Rich's surname. Um, Two brilliant people from Drennan who completely made made, made the uh, event for us and um, tried to give back 
by sort of documenting what we did and filming, which we've already mentioned the film, look at that. And off, off we trotted. And so what, what happens is you go out on the first day and you try and get a feel for the, for the venue. We call it write-off day because the venue's not been fished because it's been closed for two weeks. So you're finding out the depths, you're finding out the species, you're kind of roughing out your yeah. plan. Um, and it was tough. It was a tough day. Hey, it was a bit of wind. <laughs> Where's that come from? Typhoon. Typhoon Lagoon. Hope it's not bringing in the rain with it. Whoa. Hang on to your pole, Joe. Yeah, so we, we rough it out and uh, we get a feel for it. And we averaged between three and five pounds uh, on that particular day. So it's like, well, if we get a bit better at doing that and we hone the techniques, we'll, uh, we'll be able somewhere. to increase on that build on it, yeah. And it were these catfish were definitely going to be the main target. Ooh. I think a carp's got you, and the, wind, <laughs> and the wind's got you in the other direction. Typhoon lagoon's blowing me one way. Yeah. These carp's towing me. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, I don't think you like the fact that the wind were pulling your no, pole. No, no, no. Ah, no, no, no. he's uh, he's on. finished it off, hasn't he? I've got my rig back, mate. Like, Good lad. Can't waste a big head. <laughs> and um, so off we trots again, and we caught an odd, odd carassi or small ones. So that gave us a bit of a start on what we were hoping to, to do for the next day. And then the next day we're like, right, a different section, because you rotate. Oh, it's a family coming down there. Uh, you rotate your practice week. Basically you're drawn like, a, like match pegs for the team. And you get a allotted space and you all fish together. <clears throat> Under like the match times and... Yeah, uh, it's like a dress rehearsal every day. Yeah. And we all sit, divide the box up between the six of us. And, and, and we fish away. Day two was a similar sort of day. Um, catfish, odd carassios, maybe the weights that we were catching, big three, four pound odd, five pound So odd. it's not amazing fishing then? No, no, but well, I'd be lying bites. if I said there weren't a lot of bites, because yeah. there were, but catfish are hard to catch. Uh, you've got to get them spot on. And they're only, they're only small, aren't they? Yeah, they're very small. And unusually, they were further out. Um, and I think it was something to do with the depth or the colour or the bottom because they like a, they like a silty bottom they do. They're not particularly keen on the hard bottom because they live sifting through the debris and the detritus of the bottom of the canal. Opportunists, um, I'm saying. Yeah, 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 the scavengers. So you had to fish a fair distance, which means it's a slow old job. You miss a bite, got to retrieve it all the way back, get it to sink back to the bottom and it's a long job. It's not like pole fishing. So. That lowers the weights as well. If you were catching them, you know, to 12 metres pole, to yeah, hand or yeah. on pole or whatever, yeah, you could you could double the weights. Of course you could, you'd miss less parts, you'd be able to present it different, so on and so forth. So, um, we progressed in, in that manner. Now, Wednesday, um, we started to talk about the short line because obviously, as a, as a team, um, we don't really have much experience on catfish. So the first couple of days we're kind of sussing them out and wondering, you know, is it this, is it that? Do you need a big hook, a little hook? Is it a small bait, a big bait? Can you use a long tail or do you take it right down to the minimum of 50 centimetres? Um, and then by Wednesday there's a bit of bait gone in short, so let's start concentrating on that line. What fish can we catch there? We know there's some carassios. We know there's a few better fish and silver fish living in shallower water. I think that's important to say that it's mm. not the distance, it's it the was the depth. Um, and Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday, when Steve, um, I remember he were on my right, um, the end of our box, obviously he's got anglers the other side of him. Every single one you up, mate. Oh no, they're pulling you, aren't they? <laughs> and he fished a nice short, uh, short ses session. Short session. Yeah, yeah, easy for you to say. Uh, and we all kind of tried to do something a little bit different. And there were a few skimmers and an odd carassio and built a good weight. And then all of a sudden it's like, right, so there's two lines now being established and there's a 40 metre line for these cat 30 to 40 metre line. And then this shorter um, silverfish carassios, uh, skimmers, hopefully an odd better skimmer. But I don't really, when I look back, we didn't really catch many bigger silverfish. What were the silvers in, like skimmers and stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah, small skimmers. Um, from sort of not three really roach, though, three no. ounce odd very small roach you get an odd random three fish. or four ounce fish and then you know i think steve had a, a skimmer about 
a pound and a half, which were like, wow, look at this great big fish. <laughs> and I think when you look back now and you laugh because you realise that you were only catching small fish and we never really f got a feel for that we, we were targeting better fish and therefore weight builders or get out of jail fish or whatever you want to call them. Um, so then on Thursday, because all of a sudden, wow, it's Thursday and we, we've only just found out the two lines, we've only just found out the two species or the two styles of fishing. Um, and let's start putting those two into practice. What you've got to do is make sure you don't come off. Um, <laughs> well done, catch and release. Doing well here. Um, and then Thursday we had a, I suppose a lineup if you want to call it that, where um, we were placed every day. Dean puts us in a certain order, whether that's travelling partner for either vans or if he feels that somebody's fishing slightly different to somebody else, he'll mix it up so we can compare each other mm -hmm. um, and, and compare the methods. Mm -hmm. So does he give you like an objective or like yeah, try well, this ground bait or try this mix? Every or? year it, it, it varies and I think that depends on the venue, it depends on how much we've learnt beforehand, but we were semi-blind, we, we were kind of raw to this venue. Yeah. So, as so you a, didn't feel like you had it so No, off. as a unit, we had to kind of build it from scratch. So I think in this instance, we were quite slow in the week, no, sorry, not slow, we left it later in the week to start to put the full structure in, mm -hmm. the practice structure where, right, you fish ground bait, you fish lemur, or you fish worms, you don't fish worms. Um, you Try to get this one in? You, yeah, definitely need you to land one. Um, I've landed two. Because I can't entertain a crowd all on my own. <laughs> so you have to get the fundamentals in place before you can then start to do the trimmings and fine tune it and, and start to put a picture together. And that, that was Thursday. And that was an interesting day because we were all excited on Wednesday after this short line had been really good and it was the best weight of the week. Seven pound or something. Seven pound, yeah. yeah. let's be realistic about hard what, we, fishing, what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, no, that's and, hard and fishing, we're all low thinking that. Do I want to be fishing short? Do I want to be fishing long? What? Do, which? Which is going to be the one? Because everybody wants to sort out the method for themselves. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, you've got to be so, on at the weekend. You need a bit of confidence, don't you? Well, you're not all sat together at weekend. You're sat on your own. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to cast and go, I can catch seven pound doing this, or I can catch half of it doing that Big and the other half doing this. So he's trying to weigh it up and so Thursday we actually split the team three and three. Three did the short line, three did the long line. Um, that weren't a great day. We were on box one, oh. the end of the match length. And as it turned out, the ends of the match length, this is all in hindsight of course, seemed to be better for the catfish. And I think that's because they're quite greedy. So as the week progresses, they fill up. I put my F1 in and come out with a skimmer. Well done. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> now that's what I call fishing. Because um, I think the more the bait went in, the more the scavenge, the fuller they got. A bit like perch. Yeah. Catch them early in the week or early in your day. They're that greedy. They can't they help fill themselves. Up. Yeah. So I think the only reason the ends were, were slightly better, maybe a little deeper. Are they fresh but fish. But there were fresh they? fish coming in from the ends, yeah. So Thursday turned out to be a catfish day. It was my day to fish for silver fish. Um, so an awful day's practicing and I'll be straight with you, it, it was at that stage when I thought not really, this week's not really you going. You text me and I got the vibe, I was like, yeah, this yeah. Right. I just weren't feeling it, Joe, it, I never felt like I got a grip of the fish, but I'll be honest with you, when I looked round, I weren't on my own in that respect, but, you know, and, and I've mentioned the fact that we were doing this and that and the other, um, and that day, I felt like it was a bit of a write-off for me. Now, the problem with that is that the week's progressing. The team's fishing on Saturday. Yeah. You're you can't that leave it till Saturday morning to decide who's how fishing? you're going to fish it, what you're going to do, um, and, and who's fishing. Because we take six, and it's only five fishing. So all of a sudden, we're at Friday. Uh, myself and Steve, although Steve had done that great day on Wednesday, didn't particularly feel we'd had a great week. And uh, But when... When I talked to the lads and talked to them since, everybody's kind of, this is hard work, I haven't really caught a lot. And we've all limped along three pound odd, four pound odd, five pound odd. Some days there were no between us all, but you know yourself when you just... Not quite got it. Yeah, it's not not going, I'm not I'm not bossing it. Um, and Friday came and we were on the, right at the other end, uh, and it was a bit of a catfish day and uh, the, 
we wanted to sort of reinforce what we were thinking because the silverfish day on Thursday wasn't all that great. So it's like, right, we're back to catfish. Is this what it's going to be? Um, and, and let's, you know, we've got to come, come out of the day with a plan. And top and bottom of it is, you know, I did all right that day, but it weren't great. And I think, you know, I knew myself that um, it weren't going to be. And it's quite a difficult thing, really. Cause is that the first time you've not made the team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm kind of Which is no, got used to idea now. There's no, 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 no shame in that, because well, everyone's well, amazing. What I want to say is that if I look to my left, look to my right, and I've mentioned who's, who, who's there, Steve Ringer, Lee Kerry, Adam Wakeley, oh, my mate Will Freeman, Rob Button. It's great anglers. Fantastic anglers. I think um, they reckon that with best six anglers, six feeder anglers, um, on map, you know. Um, so you got, somebody's got, somebody can't, not everybody can fish. No. Will had a great week, caught some fish. Um, I can imagine that was really him. good for Will, that venue. No, it suited him. He likes um, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, nibbling here, nibbling. bitting and batting, nicking a few fish, you know, and, and that was perfect. So, got the tap on the shoulder. Um, it weren't, it could be you, it's, it weren't you. So off we, off we trotted into, into Saturday and I think as it's probably already said, it's been documented. We didn't particularly feel that we had it nailed, but we were catching fish and nobody else really looked like they'd got it nailed. And we went into oh, Saturday. Fish, aren't they? They're beautiful fish. We went into Saturday yeah, with the um, mentality that we've had before, which is you can't win it on Saturday. You can't win it on the first day, but you can certainly lose it. So no. No daft moves, no knee jerks. Lovely big fish. Let's go and catch some catfish. Try and nick a few short fish. The plan was to start short, set your catfish line up at the beginning, drop onto that, and then at the end, keep topping up your short line, drop on it and catch a few carassios at the end. Sounds great. And, um, Sounds a great plan. Yeah, I was with Will. Um, I ran his section for him. Uh, fished a brilliant match, did well. Cool, calm, collected. Uh, rattled three kilos, 100, I think it was. Um, 72 catfish, two, two carassios, and a roach, I think. <clears throat> Brilliant performance, second in section, only beat by a good friend of mine, Matis Sivac uh, from Hungary. Yep. He's he a fisherman. Great man. Man. Brilliant, brilliant fisherman. We've had some great battles, me and him. Um, I think it's two apiece or three apiece at the minute to me and him. So I owe him one of them. Of course, he won the. International thing right here, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah, at Baston, right here. So, and we had a great set of results. And um, as you'll know, we've, we won the day. We were top, but we we're only a point in front of Holland. Which is quite funny because obviously I was texting you, not loads, but a bit, so I was getting a vibe. I text Lee, getting a vibe, text Rob, getting a bit of a vibe, and Steve. Yes. And none of, I, almost I was like, oh, They've won the day, like, no, we, amazing, we like, they weren't expecting it almost. We went into the day with damage limitation. Listen, we could do well, but if we were off the pace, we wouldn't have been shocked because oh, we didn't... I felt like we were bang on the end. We could catch some catfish, but would it be enough? Mm -hmm. Would that be enough to top the field? And it was, but only just. And the two teams behind us, which were um, Holland and Hungary, both teams had caught carassios as well and skimmers, as well as their catfish. So we've come away from that going, well, if you just plough the trough, keep catching your catfish, keep chucking a fishing net, keep adding to your weight, yep. over five men, it's gonna times happen. two days, yep. ten men, no great shakes, no light storming victories, but no blowouts and a good steady team performance. And it was. It were a, it were a great day. Bit like this. <laughs> like this, only not quite not as quite uh, frantic. Fancy. So, of course, what you do, you have your meeting at night, um, and I believe in it, never change a winning team. So, when two people ask me, oh, will you be fishing tomorrow? Um, you know, obviously, historically, the guy with the lowest points 
sometimes gets replaced. I think can't it, do that when you've won the day, though, can you? It was Steve, um, Steve Ringer. I don't need to tell you how good he is. And he had seven points. Which is the great... It's not, it's still a, not a disaster, is it? No, it's not a disaster at all. Um, and um, and they made the right decision. Never change a winning team. We've obviously won the day. Off we go. Off we go again. With pretty much identical tactics. Cut, look, cut long story short, the venue wasn't quite the same. It was windy on day one. On day two, the wind had dropped, and the wind basically created a bit of a chop, which coloured up the edges, gave the fish cover. Oh, really? Yeah, gave the fish cover, because it was washing back in, and I think the crash jaws were really short to the bank, but we were catching them a little bit further out because it was nice bottom to fish on. Oh, that's a big one. That's a beauty, that one. Fat one, um, that one. A bit like me, that one. Oh, yeah. Like a linear. Beautiful. Um, and um, the first, the initial swim, if you like, the approach, it just didn't really happen. I think Rob caught a few short. Um, so your catfish plan didn't really happen? The, the short fish line, the, mm. the Carasio. So we didn't nick those three or four catfish, uh, Carasios each. So that it's out onto the, to the catfish line. And uh, from stood where I was stood, because obviously it's different when you're stood behind the lads as it is to when you're on box. Yeah, you sometimes see it different, don't you? Yeah, you can see an overview. And um, let's just churn these catfish, catfish, keep winding them back. And we were doing that. And when you look at it, we're like, yeah, we're, we're, we're maintaining this position, but we only had a marginal lead. At the halfway stage, I remember I was on the radio and I, I'd seen the, the Hungarians uh, who were in the other half of world section catch um, a couple of crassios and, and, the, and the Belgian lad that's had him were catching a few fish. And I got my eye on the Dutch kid who was in Will's half, so he could affect Will, and he clearly had attacked hey the shallow skimmer. Flying green. Yeah, uh, he clearly attacked the short line, so I felt that they knew something we didn't. Attacked it as in like more, more bait. bait. They put a lot more bait in at the initial feed because you obviously got the 10-minute pre-baiting. And they put more bait in to, I think, thinking for a, a late arrival. You know, I sometimes set, set a short line up. Well, that's what they did. It's a good, it's a good fish, it's shallow, isn't it? it? And um, at the halfway stage, I remember saying on the radio, lads, just let me know what, what's happening with Holland in your relative sections. On the radio to Westie and to Eddie to Rich Wilson and to Jamie Harrison. And then, um, and obviously Dean's overseeing all the sections. Um, and keep your hand on the Hungarians. I think the words were, they're on they're on the march. What, the, both yeah, them Yeah, because they, they were obviously confident of catching these Whatever they were targeting. Fish, yeah, yeah, which could be a four ounce carassio, but it could have been a pound and a half carassio. Yeah. Now, every catfish is between 25 grams and 45 grams. So regardless of... Um, so these, these bonus fish are. There's no chance of leaping forward, but they had a chance of leaping forward. And they'd had Peter Bacco, superstar. He caught a big in. Uh, Tamas Walter, um, their captain, another fantastic fisherman. They'd both caught a big in. So all of a sudden, Ooh. they're breathing down your neck. The Dutch... I'd obviously got the catfish sorted as the Hungarians. We'd all got the catfish, but I just felt they had a, like a, an extra gear. It's a bit good now, isn't it? It's very good. I think the wind's just right. If you can flick that rig jaw, what like you're doing, and keep it tight, you get group a chance, your pellets, you? you're getting a bit more efficiency, aren't you? <laughs> Grouping the fish. I've seen them moving in your pellets there. Yeah, and they had that extra gear, and sure enough, um, they powered through. And the Hungarians from a seven point deficit came through, overtook Hungary, and overtook us. And um, and the Dutch did the same. And they just increased on, on where they'd been. And, um, and and that's the story. Gold, silver, oh, and, 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 and bronze. Yeah, and we come away with a bronze medal, which... By the sounds of it, is a great bronze medal. Yeah. We, there's, a, there's a phrase around the team, which is like, is it a good, a good silver, a good bronze? And what I mean by that is last year we had a great, a great silver where we came back from six yep. to finish on the podium. I never felt 
that we had this in the in the bag in, the, in, in our grasp. No, no. Uh, and I think if we'd have come, so I think we were, I think we were fourth on the second day overall on the day. I think if we'd have been fourth on the day on the first day, we might have looked to look for that extra gear. We might have powered up, but it's all the sports and maybes, and you can't catch anything with the sports and maybes. And hindsight is the best angler in the oh, team. Oh, he's the best angler in the team. Uh, he wins his section every time, hindsight. And uh, and that's not the case, of course. So we had what we had, and we tried to maintain our lead. And uh, we just didn't, we had the catfish, I think, nailed. But we only had the Crassio line by the end of its tail. And we just didn't quite, didn't quite have that. grab that. That's my opinion. Um, you know, when I look back, I felt practice were great. You know, we worked great as a unit. The lads who support us, all the bait, all the effort, Dean's organisation, you know, oh, great. great hotel, looked after us, we were well fed. You know, uh, Drennan, everything we needed was there. All the resources we needed were there. And sometimes it just doesn't all drop into place. And I think Serbia were one of them. So, tough experience for me. Um, yeah. Red bib. Red bib, man. Nobody likes to see that, but it is what it is. And providing we do well, I don't think there's any lads in the team who sort of uh, uh, naive enough to think that we've all got to put it on at some stage. And there's always going to be some people it clicks for, some people it doesn't. But ultimately, we're a team. It's not an individual event, it's a team event. Um, and it were a pleasure to... So, to stand I bet back. it was quite nice to watch, wasn't it? I loved, wa no, I loved watching them world champs. It was interesting. I've been to four now and I've loved every one of them. Yeah, because you only normally see the guys on either side of you and you only see what's in front of yourself, but it kind of tells you roughly what you're up against. You kind of see the different styles of fishing. Um, you can see people's different approaches. Uh, and I'm saying that we, you know, as a team, obviously we're ranked number one. Although I think the Hungarians are breathing down his neck on that as well. Down your neck yeah. now. Um, there's two different rankings. Oh my God! Look at the size of that F1. Look at him. <laughs> oh, he's a big one. Look at the show him tip cameras. Look at the size of that. Oh my God! That's eight pounds. Yeah, I'm going to stand up to that. That is massive. Oh wow. He's got a belly on like me. Like a uh, great football. I tell you what, he is massive. Mahusiv. Oh, look at him. Yeah, we... Um, for an F1, guys. So, you got him, man. Look at that. <laughs> that is fat, isn't it? It's spawn-bound, I reckon, him. I'd like to weigh him. I'm going to put him in the neck, because I want to weigh him. Yeah, why not? He'll be all right in silverfish neck there, won't it? Yeah. yeah, we... Um, you know, it's, it's about expectations. And... Um, we were second last year. Third this year. And I think it's important to say that we create this sort of slight issue ourselves. Before we go, it's like we're off to Serbia. Let's bring a goal back. Yeah. We set the standard very high. But there's only per, one goal, didn't there? Per, there's only one gold medal, <laughs> and there's uh, what were the 30? There were 18 peg sections, weren't there? 36 teams. Um, and sorry, that that were Poland 36 teams. There's, there were 20. 29 teams. 29 teams. Important tip when you're slapping, guys. Check your sections on your way out. Yeah, because it does rattle on loose, doesn't it? Come free. Yeah, and I, and I think we yeah off to Serbia. Try and get. Let's bring you a goal back. We're gunning for gold and all them sorts of big statements. But if you don't go out there aiming to come back with gold, oh, then what right. what on earth are you going for? What's the point? The name of the game is to win, surely. But you've got to accept that you can't win every can't year because nobody ever does. Nobody ever does. It's quite well, uh, you know. It's, it's the facts are there. We've won it. We won it twice on bounce. Um, Hungary have now won it twice, not on the bounce. Not on the bounce though. Was no. it Czech Republic that won it last year? Um, it was. Um, no, Slovakia. Ser no, it was no, Serbia. Serbia, wasn't it? It was yeah, Serbia. Right. Serbia last year. Sorry, lad. So Hungary have won it twice. We've had twelve. We've won it twice. I th think we've had um, Look at in my feed now, two man. silvers. Let me get this right. Four, four bronzes, two golds. So, over the period of twelve years, 
clearly, because we're ranked number one, our performance on an average is, is the highest. It's the highest. And that can only be down to effort, you know, angling skill of the team in general, management, support. There's a lot goes into it, isn't there? Loads of effort, loads of effort. So I think the ranking system's probably not, it doesn't get enough credit and it probably should be that. I mean, they have seedings in tennis, don't they? They have seedings in golf. It's like the rankings are very important because fishing's not an exact science. It's not snooker where you can, it's the same table, same set of balls for everybody, the same conditions, no wind, all the rest of it, darts the same. Fishing's oh. fishing. So I oh think my God. a bit like leagues, that's why, you know, in a league, the best teams rise to the top. Yeah. Because over a, over a season, and that's not just in fishing, over a season, you know, certain circumstances and outside factors. Yeah, everyone can have a good day, can't they? And it evens it all out. Um, so, yeah, I believe it's going to be in Spain next year. Um, hopefully, you know, the team, hopefully I get selected uh, by Dean. It won't be through, through lack of effort. Constantly working on the fishing. We've got international style rules with the um, feeder masters pairs that we run at Allcroft. I pair with my old pal Tommy Pickering. Um, we've not won that one yet. We've we've been near. Can't be far off. Uh, no, no, we just can't seem to. You know, we have a, some great matches. And but anyway, that so that keeps me in tune. It's bloodworm fishing. It's 50 centimetre hook lens in a free running feeders in an international style. We'll do that. Um, we're hoping to try and do other international events, but focusing on feeder fishing, focusing on that style of fishing. I spend a bit of time at Allcroft in the winter, bloodworm fishing with the pole. Great event, teams of four. It's local, travelling. Travelling in the dark in winter is not always great, so. But it keeps me fresh with bloodworm, looking after your bait, joker, yeah. fine lining, and the sorts of things that you need Ooh. to be up to speed on for, for international fishing. Um, and I love international fishing. Obviously, there's nothing like it. Travelling different places, the challenge of facing unknowns. You know, yeah. that's that's probably dealing um, with your atacane. Even with the oh, that's rubbish that goes with wind. it. But I'm sorry that were a long story, but it's worth talking about, though. The Drennan, in, Drennan, England feeder team, and the feeder team in England. International fishing is massive for me. Uh, you can tell the depth of which I spoke about it, and that's why. Shall I land this one, and then we'll... Uh, what's yeah. next on the agenda? Oh, look at that. Yeah. There's fish everywhere, mate. In there. So we just had that massive F1. We've had, what, we had five carp on camera. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Lost two. I've never known Barson's good at this. No. We're on his own, aren't we? That's, it's, that's the difference, isn't it? Because when you start boshing in, they just keep keep doing that, don't they? Going, we'll need a stroke waffle and all, won't we? <laughs> this is great, sat here doing this. Yeah. This works. Yeah, I like it. I tell you what else as well, because it's different. Yeah. It's different to what we've Format, done. Isn't it? Is this number five? Floor. Floor. We've done two. Ah, I, I, I said, we're saying to Dan this morning that. Um, it could be. one with Sam. Yes, yeah, we've done two. One at... Um, Bishop's and one at um, Packington. That's right, that's right. Is that a great big F1? Could be. That was a right fat thing, wasn't it? Wait, it's so heavy in the net. Better. Do you know, I looked at my scales this morning. I've got scales and sling hung up at garage. Don't know how come I've got them. I don't know where they're from. I normally put them in because I've got them from a chub fishing. <laughs> Of course, uh, it's, no, it's just a, just another, just a lollipop. They're like the same stamp, aren't they? Like yeah, yeah. eight to ten pound. Yeah, great. They're great. That's what they are. There'll be one waiting for me now, won't So, Mick, we have just had a little break. We have. And now, what have you got here? I've got a Dalemans since 1904. They've been the authentic Dutch Stroop waffles. So, Tim Merton. Car caramel. Tom Merton, sorry. He'll be looking at this thinking, good lad. Cheers, Tom. Cheers, Tom. You're supposed to. I've, I've just left mine right. on my brute, it's been on there. No, for... I know, I need to I need to cook mine. There is an art to it. I've not had one for a while. The trouble with me is I'm a bit of a creature rabbit and I get a bit um 
I get into a bit of a routine and if I like something like I like caramel wafers. Yeah. What tonics? Yeah. Trade pack. <laughs> um the trouble is then I have one every day and, yeah, it, and I do it to excess thing, and then it? it becomes boring and I like a little tiramisu as well after me after my uh, dinner. So I've got to pack that in because that's a bad habit. Or a piece of chocolate late on. Uh, tall bronze, fruit and nuts got anyway. Um, <laughs> so we've got street waffles. We've got street waffles. So we'll talk about the next. I'm warming them up. Adventure. Yeah, because these are these are um, continental. These uh, biscuits, a bit like. So I came. We drove back from Serbia. Serbia. Leave Monday morning after the big event. Get back to uh, England on Tuesday night. Late. I can't so, actually slap at the minute because of the wind. Yeah. <laughs> Went to laundrette. No, I didn't. Um, got myself some uh, clean bits and bobs, jumped on a plane. And off you went again. And off I went to Poland. And that was with uh, my club, my team, uh, our team, the team. The team. The Drennan. Barnsley Blacks. Barnsley Blacks. And we went to uh, Poland for the World Club Championship. So that's a float, a float event, because of course now we've also got the World Club Feeder Championships. This is the World Club Float Championships. And we won the national last year on the Trent um, for the fourth time last That'd year. Be fifth, you know. I think it could be the fifth, actually. I'll get that right in a bit. Um, me and Lee were talking about it the other day. <clears throat> I think we'd won four out of the last five. That had been, I think that's what we'd done, which is probably why I've got four in my head. So we won that last year, which qualified us for this match in Poland, um, there was 36 teams there. Um, due to it being clubs, if the venue can accommodate it, they allow two teams from a country. Yep. So every country gets an invite. Let's say there's 26 countries. If the venue can hold 28, Four. two teams will be allowed an extra team. Uh, two countries, rather. And that'll depend on, I think, ranking and last year's champions, I believe is the order of invite. Um, so second on the trend were Centre Starlets. So they also represented England. And regardless of where you come in the qualifier, you're equal. There's no, you know, sort of, it's not a different race, it's you're all in. So of course you can, um, off we go, we're competing with them. And, we're all friends on enough, you know, so we know these lads were fishing for years, saw them all this weekend. Um, have a little look at my street waffle, mate. Have a bite, I'm cooking mine still. I'm gonna flip them over, keep turning them. Mm, I'll tell you so what, soften them up. needs longer. Um, I don't mind them firm sometimes, but, well, well, well we could try one of each, couldn't mm. we? Bit of warmth doesn't do any harm, does it? No, no. So off we went there, and that would, uh, that's a, a lake. Um, Quite a sizeable way, probably. I've got to say, the venue looked amazing. Twice the size of it, Barston, where we are today. For an international match, that looked amazing. Beautiful, big down wall, um, quite an even depth, fantastic access. Having been to Poland a couple of times, what I've a, got great, a lot of love for our Polish friends. What a friends. great place! What, what a, a great, great place! place. Um, it reminds me of England in my younger years, um, before society became media which i can't really complain about because we're sat here doing some media today aren't yeah. we going out to the viewers but um yeah before everybody walked around looking at the phones instead of watching where they were going type thing and great bunch of people lovely culture beautiful country off we went and a very similar well it's the same sort of format barnsley super professional team that you should paint the end of that paul red joke because it was like watching a feeder Feeder <laughs> proper bar, how went it pulled you pulled your pole in? I can pull the pole. Um yeah, because we've got so the team uh, there was Alan Scotton, Lee Kerry, James Dent, Matt Godfrey, Frankie Giancelli. The son you never wanted. The son I never wanted. I think he's gonna ask me to adopt him. Um but it'll be a no anyway. Uh, and then Jordan Holloway. Oh, that was Jordan's first. Let me just make sure. Sorry about that, sir. Um, that was Jordan's first um, soiree. Outing, yeah, um, for the team. So, loads of international experience. Matt Godfrey, three times junior world champion, and I believe 
um, regular section winner in everything. The, yeah, in everything. <laughs> yeah. But internationally, James Dent's the same. I don't need to tell you what Alan Scott's on five times, world Made champion, on, best angler ever to walk the planet. The goat. Um, Lee Kerry, Captain Kerry, always just brilliant at everything. Um, Frank Hill tells us he's brilliant at everything, and sometimes ah. is. Um, but Boris. we love him anyway. We love him, so why not? And we had the same sort of practice format as what we did with, with uh, England. Uh, mega intense, myself, Gav Liversidge, Oliver Scott on, we flew out together to give the lads support, up at 5am every morning, riddling the bloodworm, keeping it all fresh, keeping everything tip top, and basically look, looking after the lads. To so make you're a sure that so we a, give. a totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Week um, to what you had the no, week before. It's great because these lads fish slider, the fish pole, week in, week out. I'd love to say that you know, well, I'd like to fish in that team, but you oh. can't you can't do everything. And when you've got a team of the level that we've got, there's no real point in trying. Because <laughs> I'm on the wrong side of thirty and um and these lads have got a great future well of course they've just been to the was it euros or the world champs That's slider right. fishing, yeah they? brilliant brilliant anglers so that was great we caught skimmers it looked like being a slider match right until the last day tactics seemed to change fish came in up pole we drew a bit Street of a pole box and caught a load of fish and um went into that match so the yeah i think we could you know i think we've got this i think that's lots of bream and by the end of day one, it was quite apparent that we hadn't caught loads of bream because um, you got two um, Slovakian teams who um, did really well. Italians, brilliant. Um, and we just didn't catch these bigger fish. I, drew, I did the draw, drew Lee in a bit of a, there were a deep area on one at Banks and he was right on the edge of that where you didn't want to be. Uh, two pegs further down from it. It went from sort of 14 foot deep up to about seven foot deep oh, across God. the space of two pegs. And the ladder were up on the shelf, um, fished a great match, waggler, waggler, not slider, 20 metres and slammed 26 kilos on Oh, very scales, nicely done. Um, from L Lee to his left, um, oh, horrific. Um, Steve Emigray were just up from, from Lee, they'd caught Bream there, shallow in practice. They couldn't catch him, and we, we basically finished seventh. We didn't catch these bigger fish. Didn't really have the rubber of green on the draw. Um, didn't come but together. we were confident for day two. It's like right, we've obviously not caught these bigger ones. We're catching too many small ones. Is it how we fed it? We probably put too much joker in. That's attracted to small fish because joker's massive on these events. Everybody feeds it, and it's either everything where you're scraping the limit that you've got, because it's a bait limit job, trying to feed it to try and attract more fish, or it, you can't fish for small fish because there's loads of fish. And so we were like, I think we've probably attracted too many small fish. So let's reduce that to the point where we went all out. Because the thing with Barnsley, we're winners. And you're going out there to win. You're not going out there to do well. Oh, we did all right. We, you know, we saved face or caught a Come few seven. fish. Yeah, I mean, we talked earlier about different colour medals. Um, is there good silver? Is there good bronze? There's only one. There's only one type of gold. It's gold, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, as I said, the fantastic teams. You've got loads of world champions, internationals. You know, all the national teams have got. Well, like Tamas, who was at your world yeah, champs. Tamas is in the Hungarian the team there. Laszlo is in the in that club team. Uh, Jacopo Falcine's on the bank, Milo Colombo's fishing down the bank, legend. Um, Gabba. Yeah, um, sure Gabba was there. Yeah, he? I mean, I could keep going on and on. Alan, of course. We've Let's got Alan Scott on in our thing, if you could get to him for the crowds. And, um, you know, they're brilliant, so... See what's happened here, mate? Just to, yeah. I put a short rig on just to try it, because I caught a few F1s recently. Can't get a bite. No, Funny because you're not... Bit of distance. Yeah, the lash is not quite not right, quite is right, it? Quite right, no. And probably a bit too movement because it is a bit windy, isn't it, for that? Yeah. Oh, saying that. There it is, look. Mind him on, dinner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, talking rubbish. That's why I'm doing all talking. You just keep catching up. <laughs> you just keep fishing. Yeah. And um, so 
we're not going to come back with a seventh. We're not come seventh again. Nobody remembers fourth. Um, I used to have a saying that nobody remembers second. On the world stage, I think sometimes you do. Nobody else does. I mean, gold's gold. The wins are winning it. Everybody yeah, remembers F1, the winner. They're in peg now. These F1s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Carpet probably backs off, haven't they? So we don't want to come back with with fourth. Um, let's go for it. Let's try and get on the podium. We'd have probably looked for a podium place as opposed to a win. Anyway, that didn't work. It was the wrong decision. Um, <laughs> we we turned work. left, should have turned right. And um, we, we died a slow death. We, we, we really did. We had um, three tough results. So when you say you rolled the dice, yeah. what was the crap then? You so put a lot of bait we just in? Said, or? We're trying to catch bream. We don't want to catch small fish. We talked about reducing the amount of joker in the mix. Um, anyway, as the conversation rolled on, the bold decision not to feed joker at all. Oh, now that is ballsy. it sounds like, and I spoke to a few of the other teams. What they did, they put a lot of joker in, but they did what they call they locked it up. So basically, you take soil, like um, type situation. yeah, soil and um, and lime and some ground bait. You mix it all in and you wet it down, wet it down, wet it down and create hard balls. Or the other option is that you make rock hard balls with sticky ground bait and you lock up that joker so it's slow release. So a bit like filling a big feeder line in, putting loads of casters in. Yeah, small fish will go over the top that of That long it. rig look. Brilliant, got one straight Just away. Just put that long rig back And on. it's a carp. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And slow release and catch bigger fish because your peg's a bit quieter, the little fish can't, you're not, the peg's not excitable, and it also means that you don't have to feed. Um, because the peg, the because there's the a lot of baits in, it's on the bottom. Whereas if you have to keep introducing feed, because you're putting it in little by little, just watch these barks here, look. Um, then you're attracting more fish, and and I believe bream are quite shy fish. Man, am I standing, should have a pole socket, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're roughing it a bit, aren't you? Um, the, by keep introducing bait attracted, um, attracted small fish, I think keeps the peg too busy and the bream don't like to settle. I actually think bream are shy, as that's where I were up to, they were shy. And you've got they a thing about that, you, swim. you like? Yeah, they like a quiet swim, uh, especially if you're not trying to catch tons of them. If there's loads of them, they'll just bully their way into the peg. But if you're trying to catch an odden, they want a nice quiet swim. And by locking all your bait up at the beginning and then waiting for them to rock up, Makes that's sense. more of an option, yeah. So that, that was what it seems to be the right way to catch them. And, um, Did Hungary win that one again? No, Hungary also that's a big one, took isn't it? the wrong turning at the junction like we did. Oh, did they? Uh, they, they had a oh, tough, bad down day oh, one. Italy won it? Italy won it. Um, Great. That was um, Tubertini, Emilia Lenza. Yep. Emiliana Lenza. Um, Gabba's team. Good friend of mine, Matteo Tubertini. That is he, a big uh, fish, that one. Him and his father, Glauco, were there to watch their that team. One. Some great fishermen in their team. He's a big one. Great, great anglers. Fish a great match. And they caught these bremen. What were interesting is that a lot of fish were caught on sliders, but they actually managed to do that on a pole as well. Oh, did they? Just the way they fed it, yeah, yeah. And, They're um, good at that though, aren't they? They do a lot of that skimmer, pole. Brilliant, brilliant anglers. Fishing brilliant anglers. in Italy. Um, so we came away. And more lessons learned. 11th, and uh, not the result you go out there for, but um, nonetheless, always learning. There's always a new chapter. Great week, great people. Our good friend Adam Nimick, um, Polish lad. Yeah, I've stayed at his house, great guy. Lovely kid. He, he joined the team. He were up with me every morning at five o'clock. We were looking after the budworm. We taught each other a few things about, you know, bait. He's an expert in keeping budworm. Um, it's all about the level of oxygen in the water. It's, you know, it's too much detail. We'll do, we'll do a video on that when the winter comes. And um, yeah, and that, and that with that. And then we raced back from there, absolutely exhausted. Um, and then it went back to domestic fishing. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that next. I'm just, uh, how's your screw? I'm, I'm, I'm in now. I'm taking a breather. I'm going to stop my mouth moving for a minute and use it <laughs> for the purposes of nutrition. Here it is. Should we talk about what I'm, what I'm doing here now while you ate your street waffle? Talk me through it. Talk me through it, because 
They're doing a bit of slapping. And it's ever so interesting, isn't it? Because it's been the fishing. I mean, we even I had a go, didn't I, before we started it's just rolling? Amazing, it? It just mm. amazes me how on a big lake like this, this can work, but it's just deadly, isn't it? Mm. And all we've got on there is a 4x12 big head, um, set 13 inches deep. The reason I know that is because my uckle 12 inches long, and I've got the float just above that. Brilliant. Um, is that the norm for you? 12 inch length, or is it the first no, time you pulled out? When I'm box? fishing for big carp, mugging and stuff, I, I like a 12 inch uckle length, and I always put my float above it. And I find, I've always found over the years that that's just a good depth for carp. Mm. And I think the longer uckle length is quite strong as well. It's got a lot of stretch in it. It's a knot away from yeah, the fish as well. Yeah, I think it's well. quite strong, so I, I quite like that. Mm. I've got an 18 hook on, so a small but strong hook, a KKH. Um, Have you got all your shots bolted down to that? Right underneath. Uck length knot, yeah. yeah. So everything. I'm getting a plop off my pellet and I'm getting a plop off my float. Which well, double, is really double, important. Double plop? Yeah. Is that the term? Double plop. Yeah, so as you're flicking it over, I can see that. Because they're coming to the noise. Like Some so venues are down, the amount of noise. but here they really are. And like sometimes if you don't get a bite, but you'll get a big boil where one's obviously come in. Um, I've got about, what do you say that? Two foot above? Two and a half foot? I would say so. Which yeah. is giving me Cause... enough to control my float. Because it didn't say really, didn't it? It's quite a long lash, I think yeah. that's the term we call it. The amount of line between your float and your pole tip, that's what we call a lash. But these fish are quite generous, like that one. That's one. They're quite generous yeah. in the bite time, so... I'm not sure if you're catching them or they're catching you. But yeah. you're presenting that so that the minute it mouths that pellet, everything's tight because you've flicked yep. it over and it, Ooh, it can't, you can't help but hook it because you've got always going. an air, oh, isn't it? This might test me 12 inch hook length. Oh, I can see oh, it, look somewhere near the middle. And yeah, and, uh, and that's an interesting point. What we're, We've done a little clip about this. I've got black zip on today, which isn't what I generally use for this size fish. No, that's the 12 to green, 14, isn't it? Uh, a blue in some cases. Yeah. But these, because it's such a shallow lake, you hook them and every single one's bottomed us out back pretty much, hasn't it? Bolts. And yeah. I just think that with a stronger elastic, chances are we might lose, like, lose a few hook pulls. Or... Yeah, because everybody automatically, big fish, they just go heavier, heavier, heavier elastic. But in this situation, you won't get them in any faster on a heavier elastic. If anything, no. you just lose a few. Points. But I think the point you're actually making, which I'll just reiterate, is that because it's not a snaggy venue, you it's can a, let them all gravel on the bottom. It gives you you're time to, to feed keep them, them out of the trees. Yeah. Let them move out your swim a bit quieter yeah, as well. Because they to... don't boil and thrash. And... It's not an F1 race where you're trying to get in and out. Yeah. You're trying to build your... It takes five this minutes is a to build... waffle race, I'll tell you yeah. what this is. Build your swim up again for the next one. But interesting, what I've got... Up? Is... No, I'm all right, I'm all right. I'm, I'm... Sorry, I'm starving. And uh, I've got that zip adjuster bead on, which I've done a video myself about this. And it's just there, look. Yeah. And I have 12 inches or so of elastic hanging out, like a extra elastic. Yeah, when you were fishing then, it's dangling. So, yeah, so you're... it's dangling this end, but the elastic's tension just nice. Yeah. But when the fish on a venue like this tears off, that 12 inches, I've measured it at home, it ends up two metres, which is a lot of difference, isn't it? Yeah. Big, when you in this situation, yeah. A bit extra. A bit extra, yeah, and it just gives you that a bit extra just to make a mistake and still get your fish in. Yeah, so it's pulled it through. But it pulls it through the yeah. beach, yeah. So it's tight enough to hold it. And if I was hooking skimmers or F1s or smaller carp, no, it, wouldn't it wouldn't pull it through. No, no. But when you're hooking these ones that are trying to pull you across the lake. Because as the elastic stretches, I mean, I'll move you off. As the elastic stretches, it, it goes thinner. It reduces diameter and it pulls through. That's it. Yeah. Sorry, guys, we've got a... I'm multitasking. I'm, I'm managing to eat... If you're shoot waffling and I'm shoot waffling and moving sections. So, yeah, and... I'm watching a master at work and as I'm, well. I'm just feeding six mil pellets, coppins. Yeah. Um, with a red one on the hook, which I think... I know you were laughing at me earlier, but I do think a red one is the best up bait. Just as it a bit of a standout job. But you wouldn't think twice about putting two red maggots on, would you? No. Oh, All right, I'll give you that, I'll give you that. Um, so I'm always like, you're feeding brown ones, but yeah. then again, you're saying it stands out, aren't you? Yeah, I think it just creates a stronger silhouette. Um, yeah, it's just really good fishing, isn't it? I mean, you've just dyed them red, haven't you? I mean, because people yeah. are going, oh, what, what red pellets are You can are use Robin Reds. Yeah. Um, I, I like mean, nice, bright red. I like it, yeah, Robin Reds are good. Yeah. But I do like a vibrant. Could be bigger. Bright red, yeah, yeah. And it's not nothing. It's just work rate, isn't it? Like, 
making sure we're keeping some feed going in. Are you in, are you in control there, Joe? Oh, not really. That elastic's looking tight now. Yeah, he's on. And it's I'm a big fish. Making sure we keep but some pellets going. That's in. an interesting thing because you've not got really strong elastic on. You can relax, drop your pole between your legs then, some pellets put your catio, feed it. Because of course we're match anglers, aren't we? So we're constantly trying <laughs> to get efficiency. I think a lot of people who um, tune into what we're doing are out for a nice day's fishing, but ultimately we've got people who want to catch as many as they can. Mm. And also there's other people who want to catch a few more than what they're catching. And what you're doing there, which is interesting for me to see, is you're hanging on to that, the elastic's doing all the work, and you're picking your catty up, maintaining your swim, yep. so that by the time you've landed it, you can pick, put a fresh pellet on, yep. ship back out and catch another one straight away, which is what makes the difference between 100 think, pound and 200 pound, isn't I it? think when you're shallow fishing, most of your work's done, your good work's done when your pole's not out there. Mm. I think the longer you can let them have a free feed. Because they're spooky. Yeah, they're spooky, and the longer you can leave them, Andy Powell's the master at it. He's his pole is never really out, but it's always out when it matters, if that makes sense. He nips out, catches one. He nips out, one. catches one. He has a lighter elastic. He gets them in so fast, don't get me wrong, but... Yeah, because you're not, not ligging for bream, are you? Like, the longer I can you're leave that, fish. the quicker I'll probably get a bite. Like, before, we did, were doing a bit of work behind us. Not really work, but a bit of work. Yeah, well, we Went straight out and got one within seconds. Yes, yes, that's right, yeah. The big fish, are were settled. Yeah, this one is, isn't it? Yeah, the big old fish. Because you've been the ones you've been catching while we've been, well, I've been talking, sorry, not while we've been talking. You've uh, you've gaffered them, haven't you? But there's some massive. That is a good fish. Yeah. I don't know if he's a big enough, like a common or something. Yeah, just might have a big paddle on back of him. They're good fish here, aren't they? Like mm. nice mm. condition and but yeah, it's really simple. So Six what so what um, line have you got? Because obviously you talked about the length of your I've length. Got Tell us about the the hook and the line I've and got stuff. Oh, oh, 21 power line main line. Yep, good sturdy. Yep. Yep. Bit of stretch. I've got 017 hook length, but I wouldn't hesitate in putting 019 on. Um, I don't think it matters. I think as long as it's strong and reliable. Yeah. But he's a big common look. He's a beauty, I can see him. Oh, God. Oh, no wonder oh. he took a bit of oh, gathering. Wow. That's a shuffle him into it, net. Sad shoe shuffle, I think common. I hope you can see that over my shoulder. I mean, I don't know oh. how many we've caught today. We've caught a few. He's over twelve pound, mate. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many we've caught today, but it's a lot. And that might be the biggest of the bunch, I think. It's sat quiet in there, isn't it? I'm gonna hold him up, but I'm not gonna wait for long. Look at him. Stunning fish. Great big paddle on back of him. No wonder he was pulling. Simple fishing, but very effective. Yeah, yeah. So you've got all seventeen up length on. Yep. To a what hook? That is an 18 KKH, mm. which is a small hook for fish like that. Why it's do you fish a small hook like that? Because everybody will be. Well, surely I need a big hook for big fish. I think. Um, I can see one with its head out of water in you. I think you get great hook holes. With small it hooks. Turned, it just turned in your swim there. Bob. I think you get such good hook holes with uh, yeah. small hooks. Yeah. I really do. Because they're narrow gap, it goes yeah, in. Yeah, I think they're sharp, they just go in. Yeah. They don't move when you're playing yeah. the fish. And, and as long as it's a strong hook, yes. I think a small hook is yeah. a strong hook because everything's yeah. tighter, isn't it? Yes. It's not less likely to spring open. Yeah. So I'm really happy to use a small, strong hook for these sort of fish. Yeah. Don't be wrong. A nice little band on. A 16 or a 14 would be great as well, but yeah. it's just me in my head, I like a small hook. Brilliant. A small, strong hook is really important. And then at the distance, I think you could probably catch it 13 metres today, but I've gone up to 60, uh, 14 and a half. Yeah. Just to get out of the shallow. bank a bit, really. Yeah. yeah. And the best way has been three or four slaps like that, pick your cat up, get some pellets ready. Oh, look. One, I one think you just pulled that one out of its mouth. <laughs> and if, like that, because I've had quite an extended period with my pole well, not out there, look, they're there, yes, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really want to feed until I catch one now, because there's obviously there, they're so gagging gonna... for it, aren't they? Slap one on. I'm going to just try and bowl one on, yeah, by slapping. Yeah, it. yeah, ooh. And that's hard for me because I love just to keep firing pellets in, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're obviously there. Yeah, you've, you've gathered them. Gathered them again. Well, my pole's not been out there. Ooh, two chances. Could they be F1s? Yeah, there's a few F1s about at the minute. Which are, just for viewers, they're not as easy to catch, they're a bit trickier, aren't they? 
Yeah, the, way the, the way that they mouth the bait. You'd need different rigs to catch them effectively, but there's a carp there Shorter now. line. Yeah. You probably wouldn't try and catch F1s in that wind at I'd that have, distance, I'd would you? I'd have my bulk down more with F1s All as well. Tighter. To get everything tighter, yeah. Whereas carp are a bit more... Forgiving. Forgiving, yeah. Because they're big. The Long big because. suction. Well, you've seen that common there. Yeah, you've got double. time. Yeah. It's long, hang on to the bait a bit longer. So I feel like I've had a long enough there without catching ones. I'm going to put a bit more bait in. Ooh. Ooh. Could swirl off back of that look. They're there, aren't they? <laughs> aren't they just? And it's not just carp that's feeding today, is it? We've had a. When I came, uh, you'd already set up and. Yeah. Um, not like you me. You were catching me. a skimmer of chuck. Yeah, Joe, Joe's like lightning. Not if like he's, me to be fishing. Uh, if he's awake, he's fishing. Pace fishing. Yeah, no and he was doing a bit of pace fishing. I've, I've had to go on his top four here and to hand, and that was a skimmer of chuck, some bream. So everything's feeding today. Nice colour. It's quite warm. I know it looks dull and cold, but it's a great fishing I'm in my t-shirt. It's not. It's not cold. Um, gonna just put the catty down for five minutes. Let's see if we can. See if we can. Oh. oh, there's one. Look. I think I caught him. I think you have. But it's brilliant fishing. Oh god. I mean, how long? How long have we had now while the camera's been on? Two minutes. Seven. Two minutes. Yeah, we're not been Too putting many. them in there. And that's. A, I think that's an interesting point to make, isn't it? Because. Obviously, all the publicity, everything. I'm a match angler. Joe's a match angler. Um, I don't really go fishing unless I'm in a match. And um, today, because we we've come to talk about the matches, we're doing a vlog. We're actually pleasure fishing. Um, so we've got this massive lake here. <laughs> we found ourselves a comfortable peg because we can park our car behind it. Um, which so happens to be a good good peg anyway. In the we're summer. fishing in a match style, but we're pleasure fishing. And I'm going to say, if this was a match and every peg was in, that'd be much harder. We could probably quarter the catch rate. Yeah. Quarter the catch rate. Yeah, it'd be a lot more work to get the fish in your peg. Yeah. You would still catch them because they do. Yeah, they do. Um, they do. But it might you might find. But it'd be like ten minute gaps between bites and stuff like better that. Better at the ends. Because if you caught like this all day, you'd catch £500, pound, wouldn't you? Of course you could. not possible. Of course you could, no, no. And um, not that there's not enough fish to go around, but the disturbance, everybody feeding, the fish would then probably find where they prefer to sit, whereas at the minute... I mean, we were just caught you draw 20 pounds in, in two feeding. chucks, haven't we? Oh. And the rest. Massive. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, so if you want to catch big weights, good pleasure fishing. <laughs> um, if you want to catch big oh. weights and go match fishing, you have to be patient and wait your turn. Yeah, wait, wait till you get, get your chance. So yeah, that's how we're doing. We're doing a bit of slapping today, and it's brilliant. Working, working Thanks really. for that, Joe. That's great. Mick, one thing we haven't even like begun to explore mm. is there's a load of skimmers feeding here, isn't there? Tons of them. So we might have to have a go at that in a bit. Just ah, to, just to break up the the film. Yeah. Well, so I think, I think people are sick of watching you bag up with these big cars pulling cars in, so. Um, so what was next? Obviously we've... <coughs> yeah, so back on, uh, <laughs> back in Blighty. Is it um, domestic duty? Sleeping in my own bed, domestic fishing. I think I came back from Poland on, oh, we were, I slept in an airport uh, on the Monday night. Tuesday, just wandered around like a zombie. Uh, Wednesday, went on Riverfest, uh, no, it weren't Riverfest qualifier, would it? Yeah, we're a Riverfest qualifier. Angling Trust Riverfest qualifier at Newark. Um, I love Riverfest, yeah, I fished it last year. Uh, I think I were about, they finished 15th in the final, I had a lovely, lovely final, loved it. Did it on, why? I gave it up because I was chasing my tail. Um, but I had a, a full time job back then as well. Um, what do you do now? Well, I'm only doing eight hours a week now. But I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about like the 100 plus hours. Oh, yeah. Um, this is just eight hours on it part time, isn't it? <laughs> it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I love Riverfest, and it falls. Yeah, it's a great competition, isn't it? It's a great competition, yeah, because it's my. I'm not saying it's my type of fishing because I, I don't. It doesn't matter to me what it is, as long as we compete in a match fishing, it's great. But some things I just get a little bit more pleasure mm -hmm. on the top of the. The fact that it's on the Trent must be even more. That my favourite place, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I drew downstream of Crankley Point, so where the A1 crosses the Trent, 
at Newark. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just upstream. Where you often see the bivvies. Yeah, you see all the bivvies where they're all barbel fishing. Yeah. Um, it's where, if you look upstream, if you're going north... <clears throat> common. Oh, so to your left if you're going north, right, uh, to your right if you're going south. Look upstream, it's where the unnavigable river comes down a yep. bend and the Newark Dyke, which is the navigable part of the Trent, it's so the boats can get through around excluding oh, Muscombe, Try South Muscombe, North Muscombe, uh, Kellam Island, because it's too shallow. So they use the dike to get the boats That's in and like out. The of, access. Yeah, yeah. And it runs back into it, converges, it's a great word, isn't it? The river comes back together there and the, and the dike is sort of deep and slow and then the fast river coming out of the wilds of the gravel bars and all the rest of it, round the back of A1 pits, it reaches here. And then where I was, which is downstream of the point, that's where it the sort of flow hits the bank. And um, used to be like where the chub used to live, they used to go rock hopping. I remember reading a great article by the um, legend John Allerton about running his stick foot right down the rocks and they catch these chub, which obviously live tight to the bank. And I drew there. And there's hardly any chub kicking about. Well, there's a few coming back, but... Um, Monsters, I bet. There's some big ones, but there's not as many... Used to be quite a lot of small fish, mm -hmm. smaller chub. Um, so it's now barbel. That's what I needed to catch. There were probably 18 inches of water on, so it was raging through. So, like, dead positive. Need to win the 20 peg section. Um, it's worth saying that Crankley Point, which is a few pegs above... That's a breamy bit, isn't it? Yeah, because of this convergence of the river, you got, like, a bit of a backwater. And the bream just sit back, just in that slow floor, nipping in and out of the crease. Um, old friend of mine, Terry Goff, um, the Leicester gob, um, he he um, he with he drew there, so he knows what he's doing. Just above him with Rob Wharton, uh, Great Top River Rob, <clears throat> and a good angler anyway. Um, so I thought, my work's, you know, I've got my work quite out here. I've got to do something special. I need to catch half a dozen barbels, so I fish really positive. Um, uh, big bait up feeder, etc, etc. Good long story short, I had one barbel, an eel, and lost a big barbel. Um, so you got your barbel, though? I got my barbel, but I didn't catch two. Toby Bunting, good, good pal of mine, smashing fella, great river angle, great angle full stop, but he's brilliant on trend. Um, he was above me and he caught two barbel, or did he have three? He had three barbel, one was a small one. Um, fished a great match and he won the section. Uh, Terry Goff won the match, £35. So it went a great weight considering the river were carrying water and a bit of colour. I thought it would be brilliant. Mm. £100 possible from where Terry drew. Uh, £100 possible from where Rob drew because that's where Glenn Lawrence um, had £150 and stopped fishing because he'd filled his net. <laughs> um, he could have brought the Trent record, which would have meant the end of man in his relationship. <laughs> yeah, you uh, own the, have the Trent record, uh, Currently, yeah, the five-hour one. And he... Um, so, obviously, have to go gungo, but he won the match with £35 and qualified for the final, which is in September. I've got another ticket for the title. I've only been able to get... Sorry, I've only been able to fish two other qualifiers on rivers within my reach uh, that's sort of sensibly possible. Um, because of all the commitments, match fishing and Barnsley and England and all the rest of it. But it's a nice <clears> one to fill your calendar, I bet. Oh, no, you could fill your calendar with Feeder Masters and Riverfest, and that'd be, the, you'd be, be a summer, but that'd be about half of my normal workload. And um, so great, great stuff. I've got another ticket coming up on the Tidal on the 3rd of September. And last night, believe it or not, um, I don't know where I saw a, a post on Facebook, some tickets, they've had to rearrange one. Uh, and they've okay. rearranged it for Monday the 4th. So I rang the gaffer, um, asked him if we could have Monday off. Uh, he didn't answer, so I've just booked it off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, uh, so I've got another two, so I've got two on the title, 3rd and 4th of September, which I can't wait. So I'd love to be in that uh, final at Burton Joyce again and catch a few fish. Uh, Lee Edwards won it last year, brilliant, uh, £88 on the first day. Yeah, what a day that is. Isn't Great it? day, yeah. Um, good river angler. He holds the Y record. Yep. And um, yeah, we'll try and get back into that. And then, not content with sitting still, that meant that I had Thursday off to do a bit of gear, went into office, ate all biscuits, drank all tea, hopefully developed a bit more tackle for new fish. <laughs> and then Friday, 
I went down to Burton Joyce for a practice, uh, met up with Will Freeman, Michael Buckwalder, because on These Saturday... These F1s have moved in and they're massive, aren't they? aren't they? They're big fish, they're worth catching, aren't they? A little bit easy, a bit more manageable, yeah, bit but only <laughs> half the weight. But that, that's five pound, isn't it? Not many under four pound, is it? No, no. Because um, that was the Sonner Bates Feeder Masters Super League last round yep. on Burton Joyce. Now, everybody knows I love the Trent. Um, so I couldn't wait to get stuck in. Went for a practice on Friday, and when I say practice, for me that was getting back into the groove, getting your kit right, making sure that you got everything you needed. Terrible, man. Because having, obviously having just told you everything that I've been up to, your kit's slightly different. Um, for a river. Because I had all the <laughs> Drennan luggage from being away in Serbia, um, and obviously all the tackle, and I swapped everything back over to to my new fish stuff. Uh, so I had that to do on the bank, got everything right, caught a few fish, caught a bream, caught a couple of bream actually. Michael caught a load of fish below me, Will caught a load of dace, I caught a few dace, oh, raring to go. He's a beauty, isn't he? Like Billy Bass, isn't he? Look, trying to care, look. Picture perfect. Um, so when we went there, we were... Oh, I've done that again. I think we were third. I think we were third in the uh, league leading up to that. We had a really bad match. I think I mentioned it in a, start, in a previous you? vlog. We made a right mess of Southfield, um, but we had a great match um, at Carmel. We'd won the round just before we went to Serbia. We had a so-so round here at Barston. The Riggers were winning it, and um, mainline DGG was second, and we were third <clears throat> so off we went we won the round last year so we did confident lee carey myself will freeman and michael i drew just into nelson's field mm -hmm. and basically there the floor comes at you it's the bends above you and it comes at you i basically just fished one line um set up three rods for the same line different le length up lens and fished back to front for days um i had a nice a uh, big skimmer of about a pound, pound and a half maybe. And I weighed 16 pound dead of this, which was enough to win the section. Look at that cat there. Look at him. He's just taunting your ears. <laughs> yeah, I won the section, um, I think 12 pound. Darren Cox was second. Um, and yeah, I was dead happy with my day. I thought it was a great match. My dad come and sat. He came on Friday to have a look and he sat with me on Saturday and um, we didn't have any many spectators like we have today. Right. And um, we, uh, Lee, won his section, the next section down, he caught a load of dace and he caught a barbel and a bream, as he does. As he does. He won that section. Um, Michael was down at the rack. He had seven, did he have seven pound odd? No, he had more than that, he had ten pound odd for seventh. Um Oliver fished a great match, Oliver Scott on, spent a bit of time with him recently. <clears throat> he had seventeen pound odd to win that section and the best weight in the match. Um because Lee finished second with sixteen twelve, I was third in the match with sixteen pound. And I think Frankie Jan and Chelly were in Lee's section were fourth. So we had a Barnsley Barnsley, uh, Barnsley top four. Barnsley yeah. tune up. Yeah, well we spent all last year on the river yep, catching these days, so well. understanding it, knowing how to do it. Feeder only match. We did really well. Um Will drew upstream and peg the roadside, peg sixty. Um he had seven pound I think. And Will uh, had a bit of a tough day actually and he lost seven big fish. Now it's become a standing joke in the team because Will thought he'd lost Barbell, but since then, urban myths and a bit of exaggeration and sticking a soup anything, we reckon they were all pike. <laughs> <coughs> so he's a pike Barbell specialist. Which we went on the Trent last week and that is exactly what happened to us, Well, wasn't it? since that day, as you've rightly said, we were getting bites off a of day. So by the time we'd set us up and connected it, I think pike, pike were taking them. So it is possible that that's what the case was. They do catch an odd barbell where he was at night time, but very rarely in the day. Um, and um, so, and we won the day. We won the day. We tied with <coughs> with DGG, and um, we beat them on section wins. So great finish to the league. So we've had two two round wins 
um, a complete blowout at Southfield and a so-so match here um, to finish third, actually. And so DDG it? got the edge on us. And the league was won once again by the, by the formidable Ring of Bates team. Um, Steve, Phil, Rob and Adam. Um, great team, they're all in. They put a yeah, lot of time and effort time into in the effort. league. Um, fair play. Yeah, fair play oh, to Oh, the win. <clears throat> they're very good at it. And then, uh, so that means then the top 10 teams from that, for the ones who don't know, they all go through to the final, which is actually this week. What day are we on today? Monday. Um, this yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, coming up, Staunton Harold, Son of Bates, Feeder Master Super League Grand Final. So the top 10 teams from the league are into that. It's a two day, a Saturday and Sunday. This will practice match Friday and an open practice uh, session on Thursday. <clears throat> and um, brilliant event, real pinnacle of the domestic feed, domestic feeder fishing calendar. Um, lots of big cash prizes, massive support from Sona Bates. The winning team will pick up three grand, second team 2,400 I think it is, uh, and so on and so forth. So, can't wait for that. All the top teams are gunning. You can't wait to get stuck in. Uh, and that's what's coming up next. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's been the trend. Um, we went straight from the trend that night, actually. <laughs> um, pack yourself a bag. Off we went, straight to the Gloucester. Oh, Mrs. Light. Hi, Mick. Bye, Mick. Yeah, it's shum. There he goes. Uh, there he was. We, um, Lee and I went straight to the Gloucester, and on the Sunday, we had a 10 man. Oh, I pulled that one out of his mouth. You then. did, didn't you? He just pulled his dentures out, I think. We had a 10 man lineup up at uh, Ree on, on the Gloucester Canal. We fished feeder to a man because it was the first, the match coming up from that after that and was again. the Angling Trust Feeder National, feeder only national on the Gloucester. So we had a lineup. We caught all caught a few fish. Which that's a tons. relatively new event, isn't it? Did you? Yeah, we um, start last year, was it? Last year was the first one. That was on the Trent. Um, Ring of Bates won that one. I think we were third. I think we probably got that wrong on there and should have should have probably uh, qualified for the World Club Champs in Ireland. But well done to Derby and Ringers. They went through and fished the World Club Champs back in April. Um, we've had. I've, I've been twice to that World Club Champs. I've had two silver medals in that. One with Barsley in Bulgaria and one with Press Innovations Telford um, team with Tommy, myself, Will and Adam Wakelin at the time. Um, but we've not won it, so that's still to be won. Um, so the Gloucester was good. We learnt loads. We had Dave Brooks, Tom Barlow, Oliver Scotton, Nicky Crooks. Um, there was... Will, myself, Glenn Lawrence, Eddie Bryden, Lee Kerry, which was the team. We had two five-man teams for this feeder national. So we all practiced together as a unit. Lee's very good at gathering everybody together because you strength in numbers, basically. Mm -hmm. Pulled all us in for, and off we went. That was the following Saturday. <clears throat> and I actually don't think I went fishing in that week. You did, you went on the canal and from Sorry, second that's in the match, yeah, I can't even keep up with myself. Oh, look at that. Um, that was on then, and I wasn't looking. Yeah, Oliver said to me, there's an open match on the Wednesday. I'm going on it. If, if you want, I'll pick you up, because you're probably sick of driving, which I were. So, I don't know. <laughs> we got up before the crows and... Off you went. Off we went down to Gloucester. And it were on Hempstead. Uh, Ed Warren run that match. 30, uh, about 30 anglers. And I drew peg 42, which is the start of the Hempstead bend at the end of the street. Sorry, I thought there was somebody there. No, I was just making sure my camera was still running. Um, pig 42, so I only took feeder rods because that was the main aim of practicing. And um, pig 42, and basically fished a feeder, fished a couple of lines uh, and right down the edge and caught some fish short. And then I've, I've caught a bream. I've then caught a massive hybrid. Yeah, it's a, a real pound. big hybrid as well. Nearly pulled it? me fillings out, that one did. <laughs> I've lost one that I didn't get enough respect to, because um, I was fishing quite short on a feeder. And then I caught another bream at the end, and I thought, oh, I've had three big fish in two pound, three pound maybe of eels and bits and bobs. Great practice for National. I went on scales that day and um, weighed the whole of Hempstead Bend in. 
by the time the scales got to me, £15 was winning, and I thought, might have £12, because three big fish and some bits and bobs. Anyway, slapped £14.5 on scales for second in match. Dead pleased with that. Bit annoyed I could have won it. Um, but nonetheless, great practice. Which then set me up for the big... Big day. Big day, yeah. Feeder National. Feeder National. So obviously it's a team event. Um, F1s have moved in, haven't they? Yeah. Lovely thing. Team event run by the two teams. They do the draw for the sections on the Wednesday, Wednesday night. So I knew I was going to... Right down his chops again, that one. A section, which was... Where you were. Hempstead Bend. <laughs> Great part of canals, dead famous. Uh, I remember fishing there 28 years ago. UK champs. Oh, uh, names the Bend. strip of a lad, yeah. Me, uh, Alan and... Strip of a lad. Alan Scott and Dennis White in front seat of his van. And me... Laid under rods at back. Um, bag of chips for your tea. <laughs> UK champs, slamming eels, all that carry on. It brings back memories. Um, so I thought, looking forward to this Hempstead Bend. Because regardless of where you are, even if you're not on the epicentre, it's still quite good. Um, you're not going to be in a clear bit where it's rock hard and you can allow you to fish away. So because I've practised there and we've practised nearby and I was confident, I couldn't wait to get there. and. Uh, I bet you couldn't. <laughs> Lee went to baggy drew for both teams. Past me, peg 48, which is slack bang on the bend. <laughs> uh, they reckon 46 is the peg because it's the widest part and there's a bit of an inlet. Problem with that inlet, it was running in. Nick Speed, pal of mine, were on that. And it was pushing in and we'd had a lot of rain. It threw it down all day. And I think it didn't do the canal any favours. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot of rubbish coming in out of that culvert. Fished and hard, the canal was towing to the left, it fished quite hard. Really killed Nick's peg. Um, and I think it pushed the fish to his right, which was the peg to my left, Nick, uh, sorry, Andy Moss from Browning Hot Rods. I don't, right, I don't lovely know what, bloke. I, just right, you, that I, don't, I don't know what's that, I don't know if you've noticed what I've done here. Well, I, I went quite a long chairs. way without catching a fish. Yeah. Even in the grand scheme of things, it's not. So I've stopped slapping for my last two fish. And I've just been plopping my pellet in, and all of a sudden it's got really good again. Because you've stopped... Just calmed it down. Yeah. Do you think you've been pushing the fish down to pellets? Do you think they're going down for them, or do you think...? No, I just I just think sometimes they get a bit wise to the old slapping, and it can just do you good, just have a little break. Brilliant. And they've come back strong again now. Amazing, isn't it? Or you can just a little tweak like Oh, that. no, no, because this it's a fine line, isn't it? I was saying to you earlier, it's not something I do a lot of, and it's quite clear. I mean, I jumped on box, picked Paul up, a, it's not easy, and B, understanding the, the sort of yeah. subtle subtleties yeah, of, the... of what's happening. You can read that because you do this quite a lot, and it's probably interesting for people to mix it up. Is that the right way mix to? Mix it up, yeah. I mean, it's, there's obviously these massive <laughs> F1s only bigger out there at the minute. Look at the size of that one. Unbelievable. <laughs> and they're, think... a, they're a bag of tricks, aren't they, F1s? Even when they're that big. I mean, he's got. I know this. this movie got like a koi fin to him. Yeah. They're a bag of tricks and I think they're just seen a little bit different to the carp. Yeah. And look at that. Gorgeous, aren't they? I mean, they're £5 a go, aren't they? Oh, I tell you what, you, you're entertaining everybody, aren't you? <laughs> and why not? And why not? You, you're, you're putting some music to this drawl of mine, eh? <laughs> Talking about myself. It's all about me. Well, everyone wanted more of a podcast style, so that's yeah, what we're giving Yeah, well, them. this is it, yeah. Have um, a nice chat. Warts and all. Yeah, have a nice chat. So, 48, Peg, Andy Moss is to my left. Great, lovely, yep. lovely fella, Andy. Andy's fishing for the veterans, uh, sorry, Masters, I do apologise, Masters. Oh. The, um, feeder team. Not, not that old yet. Um, the feeder team, yeah. Went out to uh, the World Champs last year. So, we had a bit of banter. Shared a, uh, a good year too. I think I get him a Nichols cake and I got a apple in return or something like that. <laughs> Seems Elf, like a one way. Healthy chap, yeah. Seems like a yeah. one way, yeah. Felt like I lost that deal. <laughs> uh, and off we went. And um, you can fish, it's wide there, it widens right out. So I had so you got the space three to lines, yeah, I had 35 metres. Uh, I had a shorter line near this ledge. And I also, it's dead deep, it's 10 foot deep. And when I say it's out at tins, I mean, if you put a 
uh, you know, a, a plummet down the side of the tins, touch the tins, it's 10 foot deep. Yeah, you can catch bream down the edge on that, can't yeah, you? Yeah, I caught that some area. roach, some perch, some eels. I, I fed me two lines, gone down the edge, while my lines are settling, see where I can put it in there. Up, my aim was a couple of pounds, so it all adds up, because two pounds is a small bream. Yeah. When all said and done, don't Another get one on the quiet, though. See him, yeah. Straight Funny, in. And um, I think an hour and ten in, I was still getting bites, catching fish. And about 15 fish. I um, thought this was quite good. And it just went quiet for two casts in it of a bar. And I thought, what's going on here? Next thing, I've got my clip off and I'm, I'm playing a bream. I had a three and a half pound bream down the side of the tins. So an hour and a half in, I've got six, I think I've got about six and a half pound. <laughs> Great start. This could be a... He's uh, getting your merry dance, See you later. <laughs> I don't think that's an F1, is it? No, it's definitely not. Not unless it's the biggest one on... Uh, no, it's a car. It lurk, it's definitely that's a car. That's why you need this elastic. Perfect. So you've it? had a great start. Yeah, well, it, especially when it's windy, I think. Another point is when it's windy and you're struggling, and because you go like that, it's a bit, all of a sudden wind gets your pole, you've got a bit more leeway, haven't you? Just uh, double ship there, because we've got a lovely family walking past. Uh, don't don't want to... Oh, and God. a car coming the other way. There you go. Yeah, I've got there, that, get yeah. I'll, uh, I'll hold that for you, sir. There's a car going that way, you've got to... Um, yeah, so I were off to a great start, thinking, you know, that'll probably take care of quite a few good points. There were 45 teams. Some of them, obviously, pegs aren't on the bend, therefore six and a half pounds probably going to get you good mm -hmm. points anyway. Then it went out onto my main line at 35 metres where I'd fed... I think I'd fed 12 yeah, big bait up feeders to create a bed of bait out there. Out there. <clears throat> Gone out there, caught one straight away. I, I went out there because Andy started catching, he caught a couple of two pounders and I thought, right, the feeding, it's time to go out there. And I um, started catching on that one, dropped short to rest that line, set it up, big pinch of worms, um, leave it alone to, be, to go quiet, like I was saying earlier, try and create a quiet swim. Pinched a big bream short, fed that so I could leave that, went long, rotated them lines, and uh, I think I had a dozen dozen fish. Um, and he had a few more than me. I think he had a dozen bream and some other fish, but obviously I had that two pound of bits and bobs. I caught a couple of big eels as well. And um, the scales came. <clears throat> um, and it's a bit it's a bit tough in areas. And I thought I'd probably got, I thought I had about 16 to 18 pound. Anyway, I've, it's, it's in kilos, the match, Anglin Trust match, and I weighed 11 kilos, 700. Andy was the last to weigh in because the section was split, the scales were split. I think they also knew that either me or Andy had done well. And Lloyd from... Uh, photographer Lloyd. Photographer Lloyd, yeah, used to work for the Anglin Times. He... Um, he was there, so I thought, this looks good, looks promising. I've been in them situations in Nationals game. before. I remember Mick Rouse, he yeah, shouted time in a match, and I turned around, Mick Rouse was staring at me. And <laughs> that I was thought, a great, great I thought, this, this looks like a good win. <laughs> this field quid coming my way. And, and Lloyd were there, so I thought, this is great news. Uh, weighed 11.7. I still weren't sure. Me and Andy thought it was going to be close. He weighed 10 and a half kilos. So a kilo, 200. So it was close. Look at that, another... Too close. Another double. Um, which, you know, I was great. I thought, that's brilliant. They reckon I'd one section, but it weren't confirmed. But I thought it must be, because we were on the best pegs. So they were trying to find out what's happened with the rest of the team. And um, we had mixed results. Because it's a team had, match at the end of the day, isn't it? It's the most important thing, five-man team. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that very much like... I was talking about earlier with Barnsley on the Trent last year, the winning team goes through to represent England. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry, the top two teams, because of the rule I was telling you about with Poland, the top two teams go through to represent England in the FIDA World Championships next year, which is in Portugal. So all eyes were on... Big business. Yeah, all eyes were on ourselves, two boundary teams. I know Ring has put quite a lot of effort in. They've done well leading up to the practice. Uh, Rob Wooten had won that two year festival. And um, we were all we were all keen. Anyway, we had a right mixed bag of results. There were some tough areas. So Paul Oliver had ten grams, didn't he? Yeah, Oliver had um, ten grams and he was there were some blanks and I think there were 
three other people with 10 grams, it was a real toughie. On reflection, I don't think we quite had it right in the tough areas. Mm -hmm. We practised in a good area, caught a few fish, formulated the plan based around that. I'd been on the Wednesday, caught a few fish. And of course, for me, where I drew, and I drew it well... It perfect for what you were doing there, it, yeah. It set me up, it was perfect. Where it was tougher, we didn't give enough respect. We should have toned it all down a little bit, a little bit less bait. <clears throat> um, our fish to fish meal mix. I think a cereal sweet ground bait would have been better. Because in other areas, the canal's clear and... Yeah, and you're probably looking green. for smaller skimmers maybe an odd bream but not you know you weren't out that bream fishing so that was probably a mistake um on the team plan a bit but, like me breaking down too early yeah yeah it's got you didn't it <laughs> see how see what the black zip's got in store for us it's full stretch that is gaffer, it? That, black, that black zip's gonna gaffer this fish don't you worry oh about no that. never in danger so yeah, we could tell that obviously we'd we'd, oh. we'd not got it quite right. Right here, he'd come off then. He did come off. Um, Sorry. Is your float still intact? Of course it is. Of course it is. Good lad. Um, and um, Steve Ringer were in my section. He was the side of the bridge at Netheridge, where it's always tough. And uh, I was talking to him. He would got results in from his team. They were looking disappointed. We were disappointed. Um, Dean Barlow was also in my section and he'd got his ear to the ground and he told me that he thought there were a couple of big weights somewhere else. Um, but all I could think about were Lee, because he was coming back to pick me up and the fact that it didn't look like we'd done enough and we really wanted to qualify for the World Club Champs. Um, so I had a bit of a bittersweet finish to that day. Yeah, so individual um, national champion, but... Yeah, I won, I won the match over the moon, national title, individual national champion. But not but the team result you look No, for. no, um, gutted. And obviously the formidable Ringers team, they didn't... They no, no, it. It was, uh, uh, if I'm honest with you, they were... A local side, wasn't it, that yeah, did the damage? Yeah, a team... But that's uh, transformed me swim, hasn't it? Unbelievable. Speaking the baiting. You've got it. You've nailed it. Just slight and change. craftsmanship and watercraft, that job. Worth pointing out to everybody that's watching that... There's, there's a it's funny because it was only like a five a minute lull, that, but it was it? enough for me to think, hang on a minute, these are on the back foot. Yeah, to keep your fish coming, you've had to change it up, haven't you? Yeah, just... Change your approach. Yeah, so he, uh, yeah, a bit of sweet, nice gold medal and a bottle of bubbly and um, a title, but it's it's not the same when it's, it's a team things. event. No, no. Uh, but nonetheless, very proud. Uh, I've only, I've, I was second in the national on the hunt spill. Uh, so that's my first national uh, win. <clears throat> I think um, quite a few team goals, but but not individually. So I'm pleased pleased with that. Yeah, that's a nice one. That. Which good. also then sets us up for one. the division one. The week after, I think me and you went filming. Uh, we went to the trend at Burton Joyce because mm -hmm. um, there were a bit of water on. We tried to catch a few bream. But you'll see that little video that we did. Yep. I think we finished up doing more tutorials than we did um, filling nets full of bream. But still, nonetheless, every day is yeah, a great nice day fishing. Nice isn't video, it? yeah. Nice yeah. video. And um, then now we're all prepping for. Division one. This weekend just gone. <laughs> yeah, it's, I can't even keep up myself, can I? Which was the Division one national. Normal national, any method. Um, the for, original big one. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's on the Gloucester. So it was like big build up to the Gloucester Canal. So I spent most of the evenings in the week getting my kit ready, all my poles, renewing elastics, uh, topping up the rigs, renewing rigs, tying up. So it's all a lot finer, different approach. Feeder was always going to play a big part in it because it's quite, a backup. it's quite wide. Well, what it means is you can fish a short line more accurately with a pole than you can with a feeder. But obviously past 13 metres, it's a windy old place. You don't really want to be trying to fish that with a pole. No, so it's deep as well, isn't it? Very deep. It can, it can be like 16, 18 foot deep in places. 12 foot's very common. 15 foot um, is a normal depth. So pole and feeder approach, prepped for that. Um, and off we went as a 10-man team with Barnsley, which was, what day is it, Monday? So that was Saturday. We went um, Friday night, met up with all the lads, 
Matt Godfrey, James Dent, Will Freeman, myself, Lee Kerry, um, Dave Brooks, Tom Barlow. Where am I? Nicky Crook. Um, Frankie Janancelli. Um, where am I now? Oliver. Yeah. Nicky. And Nicky. Yeah. Yeah. Ten man team. Ten man team. Um, old lads know the canal. We've put loads of work in. The build up had been good. Um, draw, section draw had been done it week. I were on B section. Guess what? Hempstead. Hempstead and its neighbours. Um, I just said to Lee, just put me back on 48. I'll take that. It'll be nice with me. Make life nice and easy. I know what I'm doing. Um, I'd actually. Oh, look at that. What was that? A, was that a humpback whale? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to walk whatever Por that was. Porpoising. Well, I don't even know which end. Oh. Um, I think it would be a bit much to ask to, to draw back on the same peg. So. Yeah, Lee good at things like this. Normally, yeah, yeah. But it was me, he was drawing for me, not for him. Yeah. So, draw came, big, big event, one that, um, yeah, one that we've always right loved. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's always been at the front of Barnes's mind and, uh, and it was no different. And um, team draw, Lee, we jumped in van, he drawn on Pumeli Eye Wall, which were A section, he weren't too impressed with that. He then pulled a face when he looked at my section, B section, he'd drawn me at uh, Sims to Re, which compared to the great pegs I'd been on the week before, <laughs> wasn't all that. But when I got to my peg, I realised we had practice there on that Friday. Is that the same peg, wasn't it? Um, ten yards away, yeah. Ten yards. Yeah, 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 the peg in between the pegs. <laughs> and um, same peg might as well have been. And um, went about that, going to be a tough area. I drew it aside of my old pal, Steve Emingray. Yep. I fished with Steve in the England feeder team in its first year. God, Steve is, this one is really obviously not happy. well known for being oh, he's, um, England float team supremo. Super consistent. I've had some batterings in my time, right? But yep. Generally, I feel like I hold my own against most people. Yep. He gave me a battering at Medlands once. Did it? That I still have dream about. I have nightmares about it to this yeah, day. Yeah, shudders. It was the best I've ever, best I've watched. Like it was so good. He's a <laughs> so much better than me at that. He's a fantastic. I was like, yeah, I it. won't do this again. I've known, <laughs> I've known Steve for years. Um, I think he's, yeah, he's a little bit. He's older like an unsung hero of the England team, isn't he? But no, no, because that's he's because like world number one, isn't he? He's, <laughs> yep. That's because he's nice. He's a lovely guy. He's polite. He's quite gentle, although I, won't, I want to get on the wrong side of him. He's a big strapping lad. When I first met him, he was, he'd got muscles on his muscles. Um, but I think he's packed in with all that these days. But that lad can fish. Okay. Um, so I thought, well, I've got my work cut out today because we've got poles in his hands. Um, but we, feeder and pole were going to be the game. Commons charge off like that. Look at that. Unbelievable. Beautiful fish, that is. Thanks. Um, I keep threatening to go on the skimmer line, don't I? You do, but you're enjoying yourself enjoying too much, aren't you? And you keep, you stop feet. Have you stopped feeding? No, no, I keep, keep flipping throwing a handful in. <laughs> so we set about the national, um, fed all my lines. I started off, put one feeder full in, and fed all my other lines. Twelve foot deep, it were at six sections, and then a bit shallow and a bit weedy and a bit slopey inside. It weren't particularly nice. Set all them lines up, two gram floats, gram and a half floats, gram and a quarter, some light floats. Pinching a few fish here, pinch of worms, red worms, pinkies, you you name it, set it all up. But basically, the first cast of the match, I've gone over the top of that feeder full, which was just coming down the slope on the far side. I've caught a skimmer, sat there, big grin on my face, filling my feeder, look around, Steve's got one. I think I had three, and he had two, and we went on like that through the day. I kept resting that feeder line. Um, and caught, um, I think I caught five skimmers, I caught some perch and some eels on the other lines. Uh, the skimmer on pole, but it was tough going, it was really windy, canal were rocking everywhere, lots of movement, backing up. Um, I finished it with, when the scales got to me, so what's best, he said two, six, two, five. Steve had had two kilo, 400, and I thought, oh, that's too close for comfort. Mm. Anyway, just got on the right side of the scales, 2,650. Right, yeah. So I 25 grams, the highest weight on the board. Um, so I were top. So another great uh, they weighed 19, and I'm like, this is great. They went up to the end, to the end of the section. 
On his way back, he said, you're second. Oh, that was a good bite, wasn't it? That was unbelievable. <laughs> a take. I'm calling that a take. That was a take, right? Yeah. Erupted. And he, um, he came back, he said, one guy's beat up this cop, the bream and a load of skimmers, um, three kilos some. So you're second on your on your 25 pegs, which I thought, well, that's a great start considering we weren't comfortable in the peg, with, with the draw. Um, back at the headquarters, turns out I were 11th out of the 45, which I were over the moon with, if I'm honest. Um, results started to come back in, I got to Lee, He'd had a great day, he'd done well on Mally Wall. Um, like me, he'd had a Xander. He had a nine pound, I had one four pound. If I looked in, he had a nine my, pounder? Yeah, he had a nine pound if I looked in tail. I had one about a five pound if I looked in face. That's a monster. Um, incredible. Um, I've only ever caught little ones before abroad, so this were a proper lad. Um, thought it were a bigger fish. It weren't. Oh, um, you were a breen, didn't you? I'd, I'd, I did, if I'm honest. I thought it might have been a foul up breen or a big hybrid. No They're not allowed. They're not allowed. No wonder it gave me a tech. It's, it's a common. great big common. Not quite a Xander, but it's a beautiful fish, isn't it? Um, so they're not allowed, so I had to put him back. Much to my disappointment after playing it, like the crown jewels. <laughs> and um, results started to come in. Lee had done well. Yeah, he's done well, he's done well. Uh, Matt had been on a gripper, Matt Godfrey. Yeah, he'd had a tough oh, day, hadn't he? Yeah, he were like, sorry lads, I'm not doing so well. Oliver said the same, he'd been a really hard bit. Um, he's not very lucky at drawback, I can tell you. I must admit but, though, I was in the I'm in the WhatsApp group. Of course. And the yeah. results are coming through. I'm thinking, oh, this looks good. Yeah. This well, looks you start, good. You start to get a feel, don't you? Because other than like Matt and Oliver, it looked no, very nobody consistent. Nobody were morning, were they? Nobody were morning. So. is best on Division One, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's a it's a big competition. 450 anglers, cool. sections of 45. Yeah. Um, the highlight was Tom Barlow said. I've had 20 kilos. Yeah, I don't uh, know if I'm going to win my section. Yeah, I've won my board, not sure about the other one. I think you'll be all right, Tom, don't worry about the other board. Although, there was a 49, 49 kilos, kilos. Nigel Evans. And a 40 kilos. So Tom finished up third individually. Um, as we walked into the headquarters, the big garden centre, I big saw... Common. Um, big commons have moved in. John Ibbotson from Osset. Yep. He said, I think you beat us. We've had a bit of a count up. Um, rumours were that we'd done well. Wow, all I can say is overwhelming. Um, Another Division One National. We won the Division One National, 137 points. Offset had 140. Really special national for me. Um, I think that's my seventh gold team national medal with Barnsley. Um, I can't remember the silvers and the bronzes because we've had them as well. Yep. Um, I look back at times, we could have done an hat trick. I didn't really do well in one of them, the middle one. We won the one either side. But the reason why it was special is because I've been with Barnsley 31 years. Mm -hmm. um, I think they won the national before I was born, oh, so early 80s or something. Uh, and then that time when I was feeder fishing, not really doing a lot of match fishing, and there were times when I weren't really match fishing. And Barnsley have won a couple of titles in that Grand Union um, and, and one on the uh, Aaron Calder, I think. So I didn't fish those two, but the rest I've fished in the team, all the ones on the Trent. But more importantly is my first ever national was 1995 on the Gloucester Canal. The Gloucester. Yeah. Um, and it was the first national that Barnsley had won since their first one in 1980. One. Bloody hell. Um, so they'd had a massive gap of 14 years without winning a national. And now we're part of that winning team uh, where we had Dennis White, Tommy Pickering, um, Alan Scott on, Wayne Bartholomew who fished that year, Tim Annan, um, Pete Bagshaw, etc. Um, etc. Et Legends. Yeah, still killing Simon Roth. Massive household names, and I'd brought me way into that team, and I were over the moon. And what's really funny is, on when we drew on that day, Tommy said to me, "Oh, you're on." I were on M85, the MPEG in the national, Perton, dead clear. He said, "You could blank. Didn't want you there, youngun, on your first one. Go and catch me a fish, and take it from there." Anyway, I was fourth in my section. Everything went perfect. Caught some bream. 
we won that. I'll never forget that as long as I live. We were first ever national for Barnes and we won. So to go back, this is only the third national since then. There's been one in between, um, which I think you fished, George, did you? Probably. Yeah. Um, Dorky yes, won that. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, so to win it again on my second gloss of national for Barnsley, um, Alan didn't fish because um, he'd had a lot of commitments on and he was fishing the day after, which is a real shame, which meant I was the only person that's fished in both teams, which is a really special thing. Mm. 28 years 28 apart. 28 years apart. Still yeah. doing it, um, thing. Still, yeah, still doing it. Not bad. I was a young, young, young chubby then. Um, not so young now, but still as proud, still as keen. And over the moon, so we sprayed some champagne and enjoyed went to the, the pub. moment. <laughs> yeah, went to the pub, but not for many because we had the next a week. massive match the next day. Well, what we're going to do? We're going to move the cameras because I think it's just going to. It's going to empty. It's a little bit damp, isn't it? It's going to empty. It, so yeah. we'll move the camera about. Which was perfect bit. timing. Because we'll have a bit of street waffle. Oh, can't let you have all fun, can we? Well, I'm. Well, you've been slaughtering I've been big catching carp. Catching them carp. You wanted, You've been interested in me skimmers, haven't you? Yeah. Well. It's, it's my day off, and I've been grafting, chasing all over Europe and up and down the country, up and down the motorway, and um, I don't really want to be wielding a great long pole and whacking pellets everywhere and <laughs> having carp pulling my arms every day. off. So I'm just going to uh, going to catch these, look, one a chuck. One every go in. Yeah. As you do. Lovely, isn't it? It's stunning. It's stunning. So just... I mean, obviously, we talked a bit about what you were doing out there on carp fishing, but just tell us about this. So this is something I've been sort of playing with just recently. And you'll have all seen it on these, you see them on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, the Chinese match anglers Ooh, with their paste. Bad do that. And they're fishing to hand and fishing like a pace that they can swing out and all that. And I've... Me and Rob were chatting about it ages ago. Like, if you can really do something with pace to change the sort of way everyone's doing it, there's a chance you could have it away. Like, and I've been playing with this, just fishing to hand with pace. I've been doing it down the edge at Shearsby Valley. And I just thought I'd try it today for these skimmers. Yeah, because see, there's tons of skimmers tons in there. Tons of skimmers to catch. Yeah. And Because skimmers and pace is not something that we... It's not, but they look ground bait. Love it. And... Obviously, um, when you're fishing with an expander, it, isn't it? You, ne you haven't got any weight in the rig. Does that make sense? You've, you've got the hook bait's light, so you can't actually see the bites very well. Yeah. Get with this, because there's a bit of weight down your line, but it's still soft. They take it so confident that you get, like you're doing now, you're catching one every go in. If you get yeah. it in the right position, swing it in exactly right in the toe, you're catching a skimmer every go, aren't you? Yeah, if you get your length of line right. The paste is right because you can swing it out without it being too stiff. Yeah, so I'm just making a little ball of paste. And hooking I've, it I've on like... you were doing it. Because you're not moulding it on like paste, you're hooking no, I'm it on. Not, no, no, I'm, I'm just smoothing it off and hooking it so it's soft enough. Yeah, and we've got a half gram float on. I reckon you could have used the 0.6 today if you'd have wanted. No, I think you could, because it's um, towing a bit, isn't it? It's... Towing, yeah, loose feeding pellets. I mean, yeah, how simple there are a few it? soaked four mils. Fishing to hand, so it's quick. And of course, me... We shot it, me float shot it, isn't it? So we're not... It's not like the normal paste... Oh, missed one. Miss one. Um, it's not like your normal paste where you're using your paste to shot your float. No. You're actually, it's a fully shotted rig. So if I put this in normal. normal. So what? So you've you've plumbed this up. Just tell me, because... It's about two inches over depth, but I've, right, I've been moving it Right, that's the I'm looking for, yeah. Because obviously, you're not as accurate doing this as you are. No, because you're not over the top of it. But, um, Because it's fairly flat. Yeah. I'm not saying this is like the be all and end all in fishing. But if you just want to come and have a comfortable day, I mean, how easy is that? It's very easy. Top kit and one to hand. Yeah. You're catching a fish. Wow, Joe, what's happening? You're having a bit of a merry, aren't you? Yeah. You're catching a fish just about every go in. And it's, um, it's good fishing. Simple. Yeah. You've got a bulk on the line. Uh, and like I said, I've been catching loads of fish on it recently. Fishing like this, I've been fishing it. It's good for F1s, it's good for carp. Great for F1s. And it's been ridiculous for this. I've oh, just... it's been great for this. And just sat down and had a little go, and it's it's absolutely black with fish. I think I've probably been a bit impatient now. Yeah, I think you and... can you can just let it go. Like yeah, that. like that. Yeah, because yeah. <clears throat> you saw it lift up. It's totally different to pellet. Yeah, because would I'm not insane, which will probably just explain it to people who are watching that 
with paste, they grab it and they hold it. Yeah, it's th because they, they, it's soft and I was reaching for a discord them for some reason. <laughs> um, they're kind of chewing it. Yeah. They, they take it deeper in. Where do you think a pellet? Because this is my understanding, and you've done a lot more pellet fishing than I have. That they've had it, they get it in the mouth and they're rolling it around, spitting it in and out, sucking it in and out, and yeah. they're rolling it around the mouth. Whereas with paste or any other bait that they feel it's soft, they can they start to chew it take in the it throat. In, don't they? they just take it in, it's soft. So it's in in there for longer, which means you can Leave let it. it just yeah develop. Like if you did that with an expander, it'd never keep going like that, would it? No, no, they'd spit it back out, wouldn't they? I mean, look at I that. I mean, look at that. That's ridiculous, isn't it? It can't like once you get in the groove with it. No, be better you, than that, you, can it? No, I, no, you can't. <laughs> no, want to choke? Making it as easy as you possibly can, I reckon. Yeah. No, I like it. Yeah. So yeah, that's been that's been a nice little thing I've been playing with recently. I've just been enjoying it. To be fair, just a, something a bit different. As you know, Fantastic. I love the taste. Well, I, and, well, I'm enjoying it. And it's nice to do something different. Isn't it? Yeah. Top top kit and top kit and one. The number three section. Yeah, to and. To and. They've got um, white zip in the pole, so you've got a little bit of backbone because you need do need that. Yeah, because it's, yeah, because you need you to... You don't want loads uh, of it coming out because you forever... You can't. need to set the hook because you're not directly over the top, a bit more longer line, mm -hmm. so you've got to make sure your elastic's not being spongy when you're striking. Yep, that's it. It's fantastic. And then, like you said, just get into the routine of feeding. Yeah, I'm feeding just, slop earlier, um, yeah. that was quite good, and then, but to be fair, just soften fours has been... I'm just trying to feed slightly to the left. Yeah, because it's towing like mad, isn't it? It's ripping. Shallow lake. It's a right... To like left been wind. on the air. <laughs> it's, um, I tell you what, it's like being in Ireland or somewhere. It's incredible. Um, oh, you mean with tow, you mean? Yeah, Sorry, like, I thought you meant like with the fish. Because you can watch your float going through and then yonk. Nuddy would be proud of you fishing to hand, like he? He'd love it, wouldn't he? Probably it? not with pace, like. No, 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 <laughs> it'd probably, I'd get a bit of a tut, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, so what's, obviously we've, uh, we've had a great day here today, like ridiculously good day. We've had a fantastic um, day. Obviously, we just left that last piece saying about Bounds the Division Red. One National, yeah. And so I, were, got that. I think I were getting emotional and reminiscing. Yeah, yeah, so you got that in the bag, Division yeah, One National. Yeah. Incredible, incredible achievement. It is. Again. It, yeah. Great um, team, great team. Amazing team. Good bunch of lads as well. But obviously, you were then staying over because, as with the feeder, you had a, a national to decide who went to the World Feeder Club Champs. Yep. You also had a national to decide who went to the World Club Champs, which is the float version. Yep. So that was the next day. So talk us through with that one then, because that was uh, yeah. So I, I, I stayed over. Um, I wasn't fishing on uh, yesterday because it was the float, and we've got quite a good team. At I'd, that, look, I'd look. Listen, I, believe it or not, I prefer pole and float fishing to feeder fishing. If I were to choose, if I were pleasure fishing, mm -hmm. if I were pleasure fishing. Well, that's a nice one because there's nothing more satisfying than watching a float go under. But obviously, um, feeder fishing's my uh, discipline of choice, mm -hmm. and I've really worked hard at it to get it right. And yeah, got all right in, in, equal, in equal effort, other people concentrate all their efforts on pole fishing. Mm -hmm. And you can tell some people just hate feeder fishing, some people don't like, you know, and vice versa. At Barnsley, mm -hmm. we've got let me let me talk you through it. We've got Alan Scott on, five times world champion. <laughs> also a great feeder fisherman, but he's he's forgot that. I haven't forgot that. He taught me loads about feeder fishing. You've got Matt Godfrey, three times youth world champion. Only a matter of days before he's proper world champion. Oh, no, it's just I, a matter I, of time. I, no, I didn't mean that. Not proper world champion, because that's my bugbear when people say <laughs> he's world champion in waiting. I'm like, well, he's... He's oh, won it three times. Bugger. No, that's right. Now, I know what you mean. In in the... Um, the men's world champs. The seniors, I think they're called. Mm -hmm. Although we've got seniors, veterans, masters, masters now, yeah. you name it. But listen, that bloke, that guy, yeah, he Matt can Godfrey, fish like he's amazing. Dente? He's oh. not bad. I've got a bit of a bromance. I've got a bit of a crush on, a Dente. on Dente. Yeah, he's, he's my kind of bloke. <laughs> he's an animal. <laughs> And then, um, he? he'll tell you what he does, he says no, catches everything. Yeah. We've got Captain Kerry, who is... One of the most consistent you, anglers it, in the last 15 years. Well, the year people say, Jack of all trades, master of none, but it's mm. opposite way around with him. 
He does everything. He's good at it Brilliant all. at everything. Whatever he puts his mind to, that's what that's yep. what it is. Frankie Giannancelli, the young buck. Brilliant, talented angler. Grown up around all that gang there. Mm -hmm. He's got it in oodles. So you've got five anglers there. They don't need likes of silly old buggers like me. <laughs> Shipping out and slow and, <laughs> you know, is that about? Is it the pinnacle of UK match fishing? I mean, we're talking about an England team. They could fish, oh, they, they, they could, could represent fish, England. Could, if you just sent that team to England. Exactly. Like, you're our England team, they'd do amazing. Top at three, as my granddad used to say. Top at three, then, lads. I don't know. I, I think Tor's got older it and Stuck up against the they rocks. were a bit of a twig there, weren't they, earlier? But could I be wonder, a rep bream on it and all. They could be, but it, but it isn't. Pathetic that. That's why I didn't fish. <laughs> that's why I didn't fish yesterday. Because um, <laughs> you can't fish paste. Because <laughs> can't can't fish trotting paste. <laughs> um, so that was the team, and um, along with everything else, we've we've all put loads of effort in. Like you've ever heard me talking about the Gloucester. But these lads go down on Census Challenge, which is an international rules event. They know the score, the rest of the team does. The depth of knowledge we've got for the venue is brilliant. So they just supplied those tactics, because Blood Worm Joker are allowed, international rules, pre-baiting. Um, that delayed, Mick, isn't it, between your float going under and striking? That's the key to this, isn't it? The, oh, you've... That delay. Okay. Having, the, oh, having the, the discipline not to strike is massive. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And, and I probably... That one came up too far out. I should have drawn my pole to the to the left a bit more. And what does he say? Less ace, more speed. Less less ace, more speed. Um, I want to be, put a bigger piece on, see if we can catch a bigger one. And um, so they applied those tactics that they know. Basically, all pole fishing, no slider. It's no slider work. Yeah, there's no. It now, sound I don't like that was going to be a thing, was it? I don't think you can feed it right on there. Um, put a bit accuracy of is massive because the canal's got lots of shelves and trying to be that accurate with your feed and the slider, I'm saying it's a bit of a tall order. So focusing on three or four pole lines, in some cases two, depending on where you drill. Blood Rem and Joker, still in performance. So there were docking, starlets, um, future fishing, since uh, Mark One, uh, Drennan Borden, um, who else were fishing? And Dara Gordon Lee. Um, sorry, I've probably not named everybody. There. Nine teams there were. Nine teams of five, spread across from docks down in town up to uh, Reef. So that Matt was in like a little marina, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, right in, right in Gloucester, right in Gloucester, uh, town. Gloucester town, yeah. Brilliant anglers, executed the plan perfectly. And just to cap off what's been an amazing run, Won that as well. Won that. Lads are off to Slovenia. Um, so similar to the Polish trip, I'll join the lads, give them the support. That's the game, isn't it? You've just got to let it, let it sit nice, haven't like you? like that sloth as well. Yeah. You haven't been throwing that in. No, so do you think we're probably throwing too many pellets in and not enough no, I, just, I just think that... that pulls them. Pulls them in. Pulls them in. Draws them in. So that was another glorious day. So that's oh no, that that was a great feeling. The yesterday. Winter League yep. final. Yep. The Commercial National. Yep. The Division One National. Yep. The Float World Champs National Qualifier, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Is that is that it for this year so far? Um, Not bad, is it? Yeah, because obviously the Winter League is starts, but yeah, but we won the final in February. Or whatever won't it was. finish till next year. Yeah. That was bad angling, Joe. Um, so I'm thinking about Winter League already. I think you need that bigger float on, I think. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Could have a gram on them. Bit, bit of wind, didn't there? So, I mean, it's just another dominant year for the team, isn't it? No, just a brilliant bunch of lads. I mean, the, the team's 48 years old. 48 years old. Um, Dennis White were on the phone. Asking out lads had done over the weekend. Yeah. That is that that sums Barnsley up. Yeah. I mean on the national, just reminiscing a bit, and these are names that some of our people watching will know. There was there's a team called Murfield, and in that team yeah. was Tommy Tommy, Tommy, Pick the old boys, isn't it? Tommy Pickering, 
who's still cutting the mustard yeah. everywhere he goes. Yeah. Did Hobson fish? Keith Hobson fished. Martin I, who won his section. Yep. And the one and only John Allerton. John Allerton. He went as well. That's the legacy of Barnsley. My one regret that is my time with DHP. I never got to go out with John. Really? Matt had. Um, well, why don't we take him out on our on our uh, I'd love to. days filming? Love I'm to. sure he'd do it. He's a, I love John. He's an absolute He's gent. Absolute beautiful. And a brilliant man. fisherman as well. Beautiful man. I wonder if he'd like catching on purse like this. <laughs> he'd love it. And I, 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 I feel, tell you I why. Like, I feel like this has settled back down, but I'm sure it's that slop you're chucking. I'll tell you why I really admire John as well. Like, he never. When it came to switching to commercials, he just went and did it, got his head around it. He was never one of them who was, oh, I'm a river man. I don't do that. He was just like, right, I'm going to do it. He's a fisherman? Yeah. Like, I used to watch him at the Oaks and he'd be fishing in the edge with all these little pots, which is what, you know, you're Andy Bennett's and that I'm telling everyone about now. Yeah. Allerton was doing that 20 years ago. No, he summed it up because John was brilliant at... Um, Sussing it out. Yeah, and... Feeding. Some, some people call it negative fishing, but I'll tell you what John did. He won't larrip it in, get it, get it. No, he's not that guy. He, he was like, right, catch one fish at a time, weigh them all up. Because he, he used to fish dead fine on river. Yep. When I, you know, when I joined Barnsley, the river was quite hard, the trend, sorry, we call it the river because yeah. it's, it's that important, it's the river. It's your um, so, and, and oh. finesse were massive. Yeah. And John, John excelled that. in finesse. And, uh, and despite the agricultural manner of, Slaying a load of F1s or carp. Still all translatable, isn't it? No, no, you've got to present your bait correctly. Just because it's a mad, mad tussle and there's loads of splashing going on, it's not quite as, so as we'll get your heavy going, duty. Of course you have. <laughs> and and John John's presentation and all that were just amazing. So, you know, and listen, I listened to you and your theory of get a bite first before you worry about I think your line is to get it out. Get a bite first. Mm. Which means I'm massive about that. presentation, uh, balanced tackle, nice light gear. Oh, that was lovely, that weren't it? Don't you just love it when float stays where it is <laughs> when you strike? Ooh, oh, might have been it could have been, could have been. Solid resistance. Um, just trying. That's like a bleak slot going through. <laughs> <laughs> you like Sean Ashby? <laughs> what he were doing at side of Lee yesterday? He just managed to get in front of Lee with a few bleak. But um, he only pinched a point because good old Lee in the tough middle of C section. Still, at captain's performance, that's what it was. Captain's, captain's performance. performance. So, what about you, Joe? You've been going to. I've been um, staying local. I've got Shearsby Valley, is me sort of go to, but I've been going to another place called Barbie Banks. Where's that? Which is funny because when I used to be on the uh, DHP in the magazine, we used to have a venue, Barbie Banks was where we used to test all the tackle because it was five minutes from the office. And it's a hundred peg snake lake. Right. Um, and it is prolific. And it's just a really good venue. Real nice guys that fish there. Like a real friendly sort of group of guys that fish. Um, so I've been going there quite a bit. And it's really interesting because it's fishing hard pellets across. I really enjoy that because it's so easy to get your feeding wrong with that. Yeah. And working it out and working your rigs out and stuff. So I've been going there. I've had three seconds in a row there. Brilliant. Can't seem to get over the line. The, the, is two that just where you've very, drawn? Yeah, and... there's two MPEGs that are ever so strong. Yeah. I just can't seem to... Uh, they're always £50 ahead of me, which is a lot, isn't it? Of course um, it is. Yeah, but the fact that you've actually... Had yeah, best of the rest, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, because you can't, sometimes yeah. can't beat pegs, can you? Um, and then I had, I had a nice little run at, at Shearsby, a couple of wins, a couple of seconds. And then last week... You I was, like it there, don't you? I was third, and I got it completely wrong, mate. I had three F1s and four car at two o'clock. And the Mark Bauer opposite me, who's to be fair to him, he's the man on form. Yeah, you were telling me he's got it sorted. Got it absolutely it? nailed, he has. And um, he's catching one a chuck, and I can't catch it anything. I can't even get a bite. And I think it's this pace thing, I, it's not quite right at the minute there. That one took it on drop, Yeah, yeah lovely that. For one, for, and um, anyway, I managed to power through and catch them in the edge and 150 pounds and come third. So it, it turned out all right. Yeah, lim again. limped along to 150 pounds. Which sounds yeah. ridiculous, doesn't it? But, they're big fish and it doesn't take long. So yeah, just more of the same really. I've been on holiday, done a bit of bass fishing, I really enjoyed that. Ah. Just me, innit? You Go enjoyed fishing. that, down on, <laughs> down on the in Dorset, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. And you were telling me, and this is what I love about fishing and anglers, 
you were telling me about the watercraft that you applied yeah. to catch them bass because you knew that they were a better part at beach than others. I'll tell, I'll tell you what, what it was. We were very fortunate where we were staying. Beautiful uh, apartment. And it was right on the beach in Sandbanks, if anyone who knows it. And um, I could see out, I could see that it was, you know, the beach is literally where I could see out of my window. Right. And um, That sounds bit, nice. I, oh, it was good. And I was looking every day. And you know, like, you pick up on things in nature. And there were not, there have been no birds around all week. And then one morning I woke up and all these... Like seagulls and stuff. Yeah, turns there, aren't they? Like some sort of turn. And they're all diving into the water like 30 yards out. And I'm thinking, that hasn't happened all week. I thought, I'll make a note of that. Anyway, I took my girls down for a walk and all these little sand eels had been washed up in the edge. Right. So all of a sudden my so fishing that, brain's thinking... That's the bit. Yeah, my fishing brain's thinking, them bass are going to be in here now. Anyway, and I went out, caught one that day, a real nice one. Thought, well, that's good. And then went out in the evening and caught another five or six. And it was just brilliant. I, I loved it. And I'd made the point of swimming the whole beach, mate. So are you a regular bass fisherman? Is I'm that not, something you've... This first time I've ever done it. Fantastic. <laughs> Won't be the last then. Oh, God, I loved it. There's me. Sorry, how did you catch... Just tell me how you caught them. Let's have, let's have a little... A little bass chat. I caught them on a, a little lure. Ooh. My old... Uh, mate Dave in Chilton Tackle lent me a load of lures. Yeah. Go and do it. Um, very nice of him. And yeah, just. Uh, <laughs> just what, a little rubber? A little rubber, look like a sandy limitation, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, got Seven yeah. gram weight, whacking it out and reeling it in. And, it, it and they, all, they, they chase it because they. Yeah, it was all about. More sea fish are predators, of course, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, time of day was massive, just as it was getting dark. And then chucking it in the right place because the wind was a bit like it's today actually from slightly from right to left in a diagonal another one drop and then the tide was going the other way and so i found the best way to chuck me low was like at 10 o'clock if that makes sense and it must have been where the tide and the wind are catching up with themselves and it presents the bait well and yeah. i was catching every single one chucking in that same line and it was yeah really interesting i can't wait to go again. <laughs> were it as prolific as this no because to tell you what but when you were catching carp early it was silly enjoyable. weren't it yeah, and this is just as good, isn't it? This is incredible. So, yeah, I can't wait to go. I, you know what I'm like when we chub fishing now. I love fishing. Yes. And a bit of that is just right up my street, that is. I could have done it. So you're just getting your fishing in where you can, because yeah. obviously family comes first. So Best one was, Mick. Take your family we and went order. to a little, little town called Swanage, beautiful seaside town. I've heard of that. And uh, the little ones wanted to go in the amusements. But I carry my drop shot rod around me at all times. So right. I've got the pram. As you do. Drop shot rod, little yeah, bag yeah. of lures, yeah. two kids. Got my wife, brolly. <laughs> mother and father in law. Yeah. <laughs> so we're all walking. Don't want to see one hand. And the kids other. are like, we want to go in this thing. I'm like, yeah, you go in. And it just so happened that the side door was right next to the, this wall in the harbour. So I said, well, I'll just stand out here and have just a Just happened to be coincidental. coincidental that, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I stood out there and I just dropped in. I caught a rat. <laughs> And I said to, me, said to my father, I said, oh, it's a shame my little one can't see this. Anyway, I managed to get the <laughs> rats, walk into the amusements, well, show you them all pretend it. it were a cuddly toy? I was like, hey, look at this, look at this. Then went and, back and put it back in the sea. It was like, Fantastic. Oh, I just love it. You're a right lad. I just love fishing. I know. Well, I th Any style, I could happily do any of it. Yeah, you could. You. You're, you're what I call a fisherman. You're not just about match angling. No, and no, I can do anything. It's not just about the competition. You're yeah. quite happy to go out and chase them chub like you do in winter. Yeah. Ooh. I tell you what. Oh, oh don't get me wrong. Do you know every time I go to high school, what it comes. The, the competition um, element is is massive, isn't it? That is the number oh, one. Oh no! If, you, you if you're a competitive person, then you're always going to be drawn yeah. to that. But I think fundamentally, you do need a love of fishing, don't you? And yeah. I see it with you. Even when we finish filming, you you're eager to stay on. Yeah. And yeah. Dead is the same. You could never get Dead to pack up. Coxie, you could never get him to pack up. No. No. And I think that's that's yeah, fundamentally just... what keeps us all at it, isn't it? No, no, we're, we're anglers at the I'm end. competitive at everything, but with fishing... We're anglers, aren't we, at the end of the day? Yeah, I can't, because I can't bottom it. Because, like, you miss a bite, then you're like, oh! Yeah. You know, you win, if you win a match with £100, you want to win it with 105 yeah. next time. It's, oh, it's like when it's I go the, Shearsby, I know almost to the letter what, what's going to happen. Yeah, I can't stop myself from going. No, no. And it's the most simple as fishing, but it's, they, they come in the edge and they're really crafty to catch and it's really enjoyable. And yet the day after I'm bass fishing and wading up to my nipples, freezing my tits off. <laughs> <laughs>
because it was cold, I'll tell you. Absolutely fantastic. So what you got planned between now and our next vlog? Well, I am going to visit my folks this week. Fantastic. Um, we're going to the seaside. So I Brilliant. might take the gear. Up north? Up north, Saltburn on sea we're going to go. Wow. Uh, and take, then an, just... take an extra coit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to uh, a bit of bit more commercial, and it's, it's that Brilliant. time of year, isn't it? It won't be long before we're at ed, end of September. No, and, and the all the changes, the temperature the changes. changes. Yeah, like, yeah. I like to make the most of this. Because the water's warm everywhere you go. Yeah. Fish well, are I'd, feeding. I'd lift bike. It were. I think probably far think up. I've uh, overdone it with a slot. No, no, don't know. Might just be me. Um, um, yeah. Um, so a bit of that, a bit of yeah. local in, and then what are you up to? Obviously, you've got. All sorts still. Yeah, we've obviously got this uh, Super League. Uh, it's only a bit of Super League. Then I'm still trying to qualify for River Fest, so hopefully I'll be in that final. Mm -hmm. Then what, what day are we on today? 14th of August. So in a, in a month's time, I'll be heading to that on the drop, isn't it? Um, Tamar for the Feeder Masters Grand Final, which obviously I qualified for back early in the year. I think that we're just for our first vlog, weren't it? Yeah. And um, then it's the Feeder King final. <laughs> <laughs> Qualified for that one. Um, and then I'm going to say it slows down a little bit. And work time, is it? Every every day's work day. It's honest, <laughs> honest. Um, we'll um, winter league will start with Barnsley. And then you have your little Holcroft. Yeah, Holcroft league pairs, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and, and probably just try and catch my breath. Um, <laughs> but by fishing a bit more local, all croft half an hour drive, um, you get into, uh, the other, it's, not just, it's not just the driving, it's the prep. So the beauty about having somewhere you're gonna go regular, so it's every fortnight for the yeah. feeder pairs, every fortnight for the two to four, your kit, you only need to- You're not making the what if hooks, are you? You're making the hooks that you're Just replacing over. the 10 yeah. hooks that you've used, you're redoing the three rigs that you've had to chop down because you drew a shallow peg. It's not like sometimes, right, I've got two matches on Gloucester, I need to do these 20 rigs because they're different, because it's different now, yeah. or um, it's bloodworm, or it's not bloodworm, or it's this, or it's that, or it, we're going catfish fishing. You can get <laughs> into, a, into a routine and, you know, it all sounds great, it all sounds glamorous. And well, I'm not, I always think like, I'm not complaining. Like, oh, look, mixed, I'd like this. But at the end of the day, you still... I know that in the morning, you're getting up at five and on to China talking and our suppliers yeah. Yeah. getting the work done. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's got to be done, um, which allows us the luxury to go fishing, doesn't it? And, and listen, I absolutely love it because we've got a great team um, at the company. Obviously, you're putting everybody on camera. You're keeping our customers informed as to what we're doing. Keeping people up to date, in, you know, entertaining them with fishing like you've done today. Darren's back at headquarters running the job, Richard in the office, we've got Bob there, we've got Phil Canning, he's not only going and winning everything, he's going and gathering all the customers up um, on his daily routine. Would you like a boy here to feed for you all day? Um, <laughs> well, I would hoping you're going to come and net him for me as well, but I think that's a bit too much to ask, but... <clears throat> Yeah, you've, eat, you've eaten all my chicken. It's all going well, isn't it? Yeah, it's, everything's going great. So I'm looking forward to the next month and we'll get back on here and do a vlog. And yeah. I mean, it's been a long one this, this month, but we've had a lot to catch up on. No, we've we had, And we've had an amazing opportunity to sit and fish at what is an incredible day's fishing. Well, hopefully. I've talked a lot, but you've caught a load of fish. Well, everyone's seen plenty of fish get caught. In between, yeah. It's not like we've just been... You know uh, what's funny? I, I, I cut a bit out of the last one. I'll just I'll tell you about this. All right. Um, I cut a little bit out and it, someone was ask, asking what went on. And basically what happened was I caught a duck in the last vlog. Ah. Sam caught a duck in the last vlog that went through the bush and got him snided. So he pulled for a break, broke his pole. Oh. <laughs> so that's why we cut on the last one. I see. At least we've not had none of them disasters today. No. Only thing that we've had to uh, cut for is another another skimmer. Yeah. And an odd plane. Yeah, well, uh, Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed that, everyone. It's yeah, been thanks nice for joining us. Because I feel like we haven't even had a day out recently, have we? No, we've had to have our little cuddle, haven't we? We've had to have a cuddle and a bit of a yeah. sandwich. Yeah. Sweet waffle. 
Brilliant, and we've caught up and we're going to uh, talk a little bit about what's next and planning the next media and oh, product development. I didn't put that on very well, can't finish on that. Um, because it never stops, sure, does it? It never stops. Never stops, but never stops. thanks very much and we'll see you soon. See you later, everyone.